This is Atomic Shinobi and today I'm going to narrate second part of what if Naruto gave up on Sasuke after retrieval arc. If you enjoy this video please like share and subscribe to this channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. Two days after the return at 7 the following morning, Naruto got up and went to the bathroom to brush his teeth. With a towel wrapped around his body, he exits the shower after turning on the hot water and washing his body. As he approaches his closet, he remembers that he must begin his shinobi duties today and chooses to dress in brown leather pants and a red shirt. White tape is applied to his ankles, and he finishes the ensemble by covering himself with a long black cloak that falls just below his knees. This cloak I found is excellent. When necessary, it can fully enclose me and conceal my katana, adding a sense of surprise. Naruto mulls over the idea and leaves the cloak unbuttoned for the time being. He comes downstairs, enters the kitchen, and makes bread and eggs for breakfast along with a glass of apple juice. After he finishes eating it and cleaning the dishes, he grabs his sword from the shelf and tightens the sheath around his waist with the cord. The handle of the scabbard is to the right of his waist, and the end of the scabbard extends slightly below his calves. His hands and sword are concealed beneath the cloth as he covers his entire outfit, buttoning the top button of his cloak close to his neck. He leaps to the closest building and dashes to the Hokage Tower closing the door of his compound. When he reaches the Hokage's office, he knocks on the door and steps inside. As he walks in, he notices their solemn faces when Tsunade asks him. Naruto chuckles and scratches the back of his head, asking, Brat, how are we supposed to call you for emergency missions or any other thing when you are in your house which probably has a thousand seals to protect it? Naruto says uncertainly, Uh, I don't really know about that bomb. Chan. We will just have to hope that when I am in my house no important mission comes, but he is unable to respond. Shizune expresses her thoughts on it. Tsunade. Sama, why don't you allow Naruto to sign the slug summoning contract which would allow you to call him? That, could be done but I have already signed the toad summoning contract so wouldn't that create a problem, Naruto responds. He won't have to use them in combat if he signs the slug contract, they could serve as messengers between us. I only receive his messages when he sends a toad, but with this, I could easily check on him by sending a smaller katsuyu. Tsunade considers this and, after drawing some blood, goes through the seals for summoning jutsu. Kachiyose no justu, refers to the summoning method. A tiny slug appears on her table in a puff of smoke. Katsuyu, I wanted Naruto to sign the slug contract so that I could call him for missions and get updates from him whenever necessary, can he sign it? She inquires of the slug. Naruto. Why does this name feel similar? Hmm, you were the boy who fought with Jiraiya. Sama and Lady Tsunade against Orochimaru, weren't you? And receives a smile in return. He has the toad summoning contract Lady Tsunade then why would you want him to sign another contract? The slug looks at Tsunade and sees her nod before pulling the contract out of her mouth. I wouldn't call upon you in a battle to fight for me Lady Katsuyu, Naruto says, bowing slightly. My house is locked up with seals most of the time and if in case of an emergency she can call me when necessary. In order to call forth the slugs, Naruto opens it, cuts his thumb, lifts his sword slightly from beneath his cloak, and writes his name in blood. Then she disappears in a cloud of smoke. Now Naruto.kun, you just have to apply a bit of chakra to summon a smaller version of me to send a message to Lady Tsunade, she says. Well then Ba, Chan, what was the emergency you wanted to call me for? Naruto. Last night we got a message from Suna stating that their case cage got captured by the Akatsuki last night. Naruto is perplexed as to why the Akatsuki would capture the case cage, recalling why she wanted him here. What the fuck, why would the Akatsuki capture, oh, oh shit, Gar is the case cage? Naruto inquires. Shizune clenches his fist and gives him a slight nod. The village would have grown to love Gara and he would have wanted to defend it if he had been appointed case cage. Like me, he had a horrible upbringing and just when things were starting to get better for him, the Akatsuki caught him. Naruto asks her, when did this all happen? The day you returned, they attacked the village hidden in the sand, that is what we get from the letter and today their message reached me in the morning around 6, Tsunade tells him. Desperate to save him, Naruto asks her, will then assign me a mission or something, what are we waiting for? Calm down Naruto, that is the reason I called you here. I ordered Kakashi and Sakura half an hour ago to leave immediately after packing for Suna and you were to do the same. It is an S rank mission for Team 7. Go to Suna and get a clear picture of the situation. The main priority of the mission is saving the case cage. So they came here 30 minutes before me huh, they might just be at the gate of the village. I will just run straight there, says Naruto. 
Wait Naruto.kun. Don't you want to pack and get your things for the mission? Shizune inquires of him. This is a complex storage seal that I have on both of my wrists. The one on the right contains 30 of my Hiraishin Kanais, while the one on the left contains 100 Senbons in them, he says, extending his hand to reveal a seal on his wrist. Don't worry about that Nei. Chan. As Tsunade asks him, wait you don't use standard Kanais and Shurikens? He was about to run when Tsunade told him, nope, I just need my three. Prong Kanai to teleport and with Senbons, I can hit the pressure points of someone and when coated with lightning chakra, they can stun a bit wherever they land. Also, he said, lifting his cloak slightly with his right hand, I have my katana with me so don't worry about me, I will be fine. You know that I will tell the village about your heritage today right? Ah yes, I completely forgot about that. It would have been so fun watching them deny it at first and then drown in their self. Pity. Although now I will have to constantly hear them call me, Naruto. Sama, or shit all the time. Tsunade replies, well, that's good that you are going on a mission today and will probably return in three to four days, before giving him a worried look. Naruto smiles and gives her a mock salute, saying, I know you have grown strong Naruto, both physically and mentally but this is the Akatsuki we are talking about so please take care of yourself. Tsunade turns to face her assistant as she watches him go. Shizum, call in Team Guy. I will be sending them as a backup for Team 7. Hi, Tsunade. Sama. Konoha's West Gate. When he gets to the gate, Sakura and Kakashi are already there and prepared to depart. He rushes toward them from behind and yells. Sakura jumped in terror when he heard the word, Boo. Kakashi was simply standing there, reading his book and waving his hands. When Naruto sees her urinate on her own, he simply smiles. She raises her hand backward to slam him to the ground, but Naruto catches her fist. Naruto. Baka, don't do that. You scared me so much, she says. Though for different reasons, the statement, don't, never try this again Sakura, I would have eaten your punch before but not now. Next time do something foolish and I will retaliate, shock them both to no end. She learned her super strength during her three years as the Hokage's apprentice. Before things get any worse, Kakashi reminds them, that punch was infused with a bit of chakra to send him flying but he stopped it without any pressure. We have a mission to do Naruto, Sakura. So let us focus on that. Naruto do you know the information regarding the mission? Hi, Kakashi. Sensei, we have to reach Suna as quickly as possible. Kakashi tells them, if we run at civilian speed, it will take us three days to get to Suna, but if we run at our fastest, we can get there by tomorrow morning, so let's go, and begins to run in the direction of the sand, hidden village. Since leaving, they had been running for four hours, pausing occasionally to allow Sakura to rest. Kuso. I could have released my resistance seals and arrived at Suna more quickly if I had come by myself. But I can't defeat two Akatsuki members by myself. Naruto believes that this will serve as a kind of test to determine whether or not he is ready for them. They were back on the road after 20 minutes. The sun was going to set in an hour, and it was evening. For Sakura's sake, they had been running for hours on end, stopping occasionally to take a breather and drink some water. They had encountered Tamari en route and halted immediately behind her. Tamari looked back and saw them. What are the three of you doing here? How could she not know about Gara? Kakashi believes that she was in the village until yesterday and left that same morning. Tell her, start running with us, Naruto says. Tamari appeared perplexed, but Naruto took hold of her hand and made her run while indicating to Sakura and Kakashi to follow suit. As she runs, Naruto tells her to, just start running and listen to me. Gara was taken by the Akatsuki the day before yesterday when I returned to the village, Naruto says, leaving her hand. Tamari begs him to say, what, tell me this is a joke Naruto, in the hopes that he will. And to tell you a joke, two Jonans and a Chunin came running all the way from Konoha, Naruto informs her. In response, Kakashi asks, who are they and what did they look like, do you know something? An emergency message was sent from Suna which reached us this morning, they just told us about him being captured and asked to send help. The sooner we reach Suna, we will be able to ask the shinobis or higher dot ups about their identity. Naruto responds. A few tears fall down Temuri's cheeks. Placing a hand on her shoulder, Naruto reassures her by saying. Don't worry Tamari, we will save your brother. Gara is a Jinchuriki like me and is probably one of my only friends. I will save him at all costs. You have also got Kakashi. Sensei and Sakura with you, with a grin on her face. When the others give her a weak smile and nod, Tamari feels a little more at ease. 
No matter how much Naruto has changed, some of the old Naruto remains. You showed forgiveness to your classmates yesterday, and you continue to have a positive outlook on the people you care about. You asked me three years ago about pursuing Sasuke, and even though you might not pursue him or show him that you care, perhaps there is still something in your heart for your former best friend, Kakashi says, grinning as he thinks about him, though no one can see his smile behind the mask. Kakashi pauses to inform them, all right, let's stop here and take a break for the night, set up camps and gather some firewood. Tamari responds, but we have to reach Suna as quickly as possible. We don't have time to waste, slightly irate. It would be of no use Tamari, it is pretty dark now and we could easily get lost in the desert. At least in the morning, we can see to reach there quickly. We will wake up at 5 in the morning to leave, Naruto tells her. Tamari couldn't imagine anything in front of Gara's life, even though he knows he is right. As Naruto turns to see Sakura breaking wood for a fire and Kakashi erecting camps, she leaves them to weep. Observing their busy schedule, he chooses to comfort her. He approaches her and finds her standing against a tree, sobbing quietly. She quickly tackles him after he puts a hand on her shoulder. He uses his hands to wrap his cloak around her body and gives her a hug while allowing her to sob. He hears her say inaudibly, Naruto, will he be okay? Naruto feels her body tense against his as she says, I would be lying to you Tamari if I said that he would be fine, but we have to hope for the best and pray that he is still alive. He had no response to the question, so he began to comfort her by rubbing her back a little. Why? Why does it always happen to him? Father didn't let him have a normal childhood to make him a weapon and after you saved him, he was truly happy for the first time. Why did it have to happen now Naruto? They remain in that state for five minutes before Naruto looks down to discover that Tamari had dozed off in his arms and the warmth of the cloak surrounding her. I don't know Tamari, I don't know. He returns to the camp and places her in a tent after picking her up in bridal fashion. After eating the food that Kakashi had prepared with Sakura's assistance, he took off his cloak and hung it behind him before falling asleep in his tent. The following morning, Naruto gets up early and washes his face and straightens his hair with a tiny Sweden just to. To conceal his body except for his shoes and a small portion of his leather jeans, he picks up his black cloak, throws it in a semicircle, wraps the cloth around himself, and fastens the button. Up top to join the left and right parts of the cloak. He emerges from his tent to find Sakura, Tamari, and Kakashi prepared to depart. He gives them a nod and makes a clone to shut his tent as he runs ahead, the others following. After running through the desert for roughly two hours, they arrived at Suna's gates, but the guards there stopped them. Halt! State your purpose here. Naruto says, we brought someone with us, and we are here on the Hokage's orders to help Suna and find its case cage, before stepping aside to let the guards see Tamari. They give her a quick bow. Tamari simply nods to them and enters the village, followed by the other three. Tamari. Dono. It is good to see you here. She encounters a San Janin and inquires. Where is Gara? Are you aware of what took place? Furthermore, I never see Konkuro. Tell me everything. Tamari, calm down and ask her questions one at a time. She blushes upon seeing Naruto and falters slightly in her response. You are overwhelming her, Naruto tells her. Now, Kunoichi.san, please tell us what you know. Konkuro.san is in the hospital after being poisoned. After saying, you should go there and ask Baki.san about the situation. XYZ quickly thanks her and heads to the hospital, asking the receptionist about his room before entering his room on the second floor. While two elderly people are present, Naruto notices that a few medic ninjas are attempting to heal Konkuro as he writhes in pain. Sakura and Tamari rush to his aid, and the male between them looks at him and Kakashi indifferently, but the female one has a look of recognition on her face. Naruto comes to the quick conclusion that she may have recognized Kakashi and watches as she calls him a jerk and rushes to attack him. However, Naruto quickly moves to block her path, grasps the handle of his katana, and dodges her blow by moving behind her pulling his katana out from under the cloak, and putting it around her neck. There is complete silence in the room as Naruto warns her, make one move you wrinkly old hag and your head will be separated from its shoulders, with some people perspiring a little from the situation. Now tell me what are you trying to do by suddenly attacking sensei, he asks. What he did back then is something I will always remember, she had to take his warning seriously when he could get behind her like that. White Fang of the Leaf, I shall avenge the death of my son by defeating him today. Chio says, attempting to stay motionless. You stupid idiot, Naruto calls her openly in front of her shinobi, who are gaping. Look at him carefully, he resembles the white fang because he is his son, Kakashi Hitaki. Naruto then strips her of his sword and puts it back in its scabbard. 
The male of the two tells her, moreover, the white fang of the leaf died years ago, as Chio takes a moment to comprehend the situation. When Chio laughs uncomfortably and says, gotcha, I was only pretending to be senile, Naruto simply shakes his head. Get a check. Up done and next time don't do something so stupid, I might not stop, Naruto tells her. Okay, Naruto, that's sufficient. As he enters, Kakashi declares, we are here to help them. The others turn to watch Konkuro after he screams, and Sakura approaches him to examine him, listening to his heartbeat and examining his mouth and eyes. It appears that they administered a toxin based on heavy metals to him, it's the kind that destroys the cells in the muscles. Please provide me with his health report, Sakura says to the medical staff, who are amazed at her prompt evaluation. Though I can still tell that she still loves Sasuke and hasn't moved on, Naruto reflects, well, she has done some training in the last three years. She is not completely useless as I thought she would be. As she looks over the pages of his medical report, Naruto turns to Baki and instructs the ninjas to bring her some ingredients right away so she can make an antidote for the poison. As Tamari stands close by to listen, he asks, Baki.san, please tell all the information about what happened in the village. The village was attacked by a man going by the name Didera. There were red clouds on a black cloak he wore. He began bombing our village's buildings, so Gara had to fight him by blocking them with his sand. He battled against him for a long time, but he also had to defend the villagers. He took advantage of that, wearing Gara down and rendering him unconscious. As Baki was telling them this, Naruto, who was now greatly impressed with Sakura, watched as she drained the toxins from Konkuro's body and protected him from harm. There won't be a difference between you and me if because of the past I start treating you badly. Consider me impressed Sakura. I know the basics of medical ninjutsu and studied human anatomy. I know how to perform a couple of surgeries, one of which is eye surgery, although I won't be able to do any on others because of the Kyubi's chakra. He then pulls a bingo book out of a storage seal present on the inside of his cloak and looks for Didara's entry in it. We will have to wait and see, Naruto muses as he closes his book and seals it. Didara, S rank missing ninja from Iwa. Said to have tried to explode the Suchikage when he disrespected his art, whatever the fuck that means. Uses clay to make explosives from them. Hum, don't most of the Iwa ninjas have Doden? Style jutsus. Pardon my question, but what is the status of the Akatsuki pursuit? Baki is questioned by Kakashi. They sent out a tracking unit, but they haven't gotten back to us yet. Based on the circumstances, we probably don't have a lead on them. Konkuro has awakened, Baki. Sama, as Kakashi, Naruto, and Baki enter upon hearing that, a random sand medic says. Tamari, you're already back. Weakly, Konkuro asks her. I had to come back as soon as I heard the village was in crisis. In an attempt to break up their conversation, Naruto says, sorry, for making you worry. Forgive me for interfering and it is good to see that you are all right, Konkuro but we have to save Gara as well so if you could please tell us anything of help, Naruto asks him. There were two members of the enemy force. Outside the village, I engaged in combat with his partner, but he easily defeated me. Konkuro informs them, I managed to collect a fragment of his attire. All you need to do is follow its scent. I found it strange that there was only one Akatsuki in the village. Naruto says, they usually travel in a pair. Konkuro observes him for a few seconds before recognizing him. Is it Uzumaki or Naruto? While Naruto simply smiles and waves his hand slightly. Kachiyose no jutsu. Kakashi calls forth a group of dogs and instructs them to follow the scent from the cloth, while he dispatches Pakun to notify Guy of the new lead and bring them to the location. Ebizo.g. Sama and Shio.ba. Sama. Konkuro turns to his right and exclaims. I would like to hear it from you again. Is it accurate to say that Sasori was one of the two adversaries? As Konkuro looks down, she asks him. Konkuro, how about it? Ebizo queries him. Hi, it was Red Sand Sasori. He himself stated as much. With the assistance of others, Sakura managed to create the poison's antidote in the lab, and by noon, she had given it to Konkuro. An hour later, the tracking team returned, and the Leaf Ninjas rested a little after their all dot day journey yesterday. Kakashi, I know where they are. Pakun tells them, they are in a cave somewhere between Konoha and Sand Village, while Kakashi shows him a map to mark the location. How about Guy's group? Have you conveyed the message to them? Kakashi queries him. Hey, since they were coming from Konoha, they were nearer the cave. They're headed to the cave. Kakashi da. Summons him and nods in agreement. After five minutes, they reach the village gate to find a few San Shinobis standing there with Baki, 
Tamari, and Shio. All right let us prepare and go. Kakashi says as Naruto creates a clone and instructs it to notify the Sand Ninjas in Konkuro's room. Don't you think that a team of four would have been adequate for the mission? Kakashi queries the assembled shinobi. The majority of the ninjas have been instructed by the council to remain in the village and guard it. They believe that we might be vulnerable to attack if word spread that the case cage had been taken, Baki tells them. Holding Naruto's hand, Tamari says, I will ask them to send a team or two for backup as soon as possible. Please, Naruto, bring my little brother back alive. He tells her, don't worry Tamari, I will do my best to save him, and she releases his hand. Shio steps forward and says, I'll be going on the mission with you, Leaf Ninjas. I don't want to pass up the opportunity to speak with the grandchild. Additionally, Naruto was already annoyed with her for accompanying them, and now she had to go and say, I don't trust the life of my cage in the hands of Konoha Shinobis, one of whom killed my child. Shut the fuck up you silly bitch, your village is only sending an old lady for rescuing their cage, Suna would owe Konoha big time if we rescue him but Gara is my friend and his safety becomes my concern as well, he says to her, looking her in the eye while the others are stunned by his casual use of a village elder. He then slightly channels the Kayubi's chakra, which causes his eyes to turn red and develop slits. You will therefore keep quiet for the remainder of the trip because I will kill you before you can see your grandson and accuse the Akatsuki of being responsible if you irritate me. No one will question me about that, he tells her, receiving a terrified nod in return. His eyes return to their typical ocean. Less blue, and he begins to run toward the cave, followed by Sakura and Kakashi. Chio remains motionless for a while, but she returns when Tamari gives her shoulder a little tap. They'll abandon you. Chio. Ba. Sama. Chio wipes the perspiration from her face and follows them. Zetsu had sensed both teams and, as he watched Naruto and the group advance to their location, he merged with the ground to inform the leader about it. Oh and be wary of the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi, she says, smirking slightly at the elder being put in her place. As soon as Naruto senses another emotion besides the three with him, he concludes, I thought I was dreaming or something. I sensed someone near the three of us and was correct when I saw a flicker of sunlight near the tree. So the Akatsuki have a spy in them that can stay translucent and can travel through the ground but he is good, I wasn't able to pinpoint his position if not for the reflection. Within the cavern, leader. Sama, two teams are rapidly coming toward us. One is traveling from Suna, and the other is from Konoha. Who are they? The one from Konoha has Might Guy in them while Kakashi Hitaki and the Kayubi Jinshuriki are present in the team from Suna, Setsu tells him. We must prevent them from interfering with the procedure. The leader says, we need another half hour to finish. Kisame seizes the chance to battle Guy. Yeah, I'll fight the Taijutsu freak, he says, I have a personal dispute with him. Okay, so you're supposed to prevent Kisame and Itachi from tampering with the ceiling. Kisame arrived at Guy and his team first because they were nearer to the location. Use the impersonation jutsu on the two ninjas Sasori brought with him. They nodded at his orders and left the others to face them. Itachi drops close to them in his Akatsuki cloak a few seconds after Naruto stops everyone when he senses someone approaching. Kakashi warns them, don't look into his eyes, he can put you in a genjutsu through it, as everyone, with the exception of Naruto, lowers their grazes. So, sensei, how are we going to combat him? Sakura inquires as Kakashi reveals his left eye. You watch the movements of his feet and predict his movements, he informs them. How long has it been, Uchiha Itachi? You haven't come for me in three years, Naruto says, staring at him. Naruto, did you not hear me? I simply told him not to look him in the eye, but Naruto ignores me. Itachi traps him in a genjutsu and says, it has been a while, Naruto.kun but you will have to come with me, though he is shocked to see him smirk. Naruto declares, genjutsu of that level doesn't work on me Itachi, adding that a genjutsu can be broken if the person using it gets chakra from someone else. Itachi had to confess that he was somewhat impressed by that. And I have a chakra beast in me, it is quite easy to break out of it now. All right, so how about this? And transforms it into the Mangeku Sharingan by channeling additional chakra into his eyes. Oh, fuck me, he says, but it's too late because he hears. Sukuyomi. And he's tied in a T-pose on a post in a world where everything is red. The world of Sukuyomi, Naruto.kun, welcome to my world, where I have time and space under my control. While only a few seconds would have passed in the real world, you will spend the next three days witnessing the agonizing deaths of everyone you care about. He then forces him to watch as dozens of Itachis appear behind the people he loves and murder them, when he turns around, 
he doesn't hear Naruto scream and notices that Naruto is expressionless as he watches all of this. You really think I would accept all of this as fact, Itachi? Naruto looks at Sasuke and says, it worked on him because you showed him the things that actually happened and also because he was all but 7 or 8 at that time. This time, Itachi was impressed, and not just a little. Itachi then makes several clones of Naruto, hanging them in the same position on a post, and begins stabbing them with swords. You have improved a lot and become strong in the past 3 years. Naruto.kun. To be able to force me to use Sukuyomi on you speaks a lot about you, he says. Additionally, this isn't Naruto.kun. After this, you won't have any stab wounds, but you will still feel pain, Itachi tells him. Brie. Amazing. It's unbelievable that you can use Genjutsu to cause pain to other people, Naruto remarks between pants. If your labored breathing indicates anything, you are obviously in pain, but you are not yelling in agony. Naruto.kun. You've developed some pain tolerance during the training, huh? Itachi continues, I always wanted to, ask you something, why did you kill everyone, from adults and elderly people to the children of the Uchiha clan? But leave your brother alive? I mean, you didn't even abandon your parents. Itachi appeared to ponder for a few moments as a range of emotions passed through him. Naruto could easily sense them even though he didn't display them on his face. I just wanted to test myself and left Sasuke alive because of his potential. Who are you kidding? You tested yourself and killed the entire clan already. For the Mangekyu Sharingan to exist among them, there must be a select few. Itachi watches Naruto for a reaction when he mentions his mother. My own mother had it, she awakened it the night your mother died in the Kyubi attack, he says. So you know about your parents. She keeps it a secret from the rest of the clan, but I once caught a glimpse of it when she was facing the mirror. There you have it. You left Sasuke alive despite having a lot of people to test your abilities against. Why not also finish him? I wanted to put myself to the test against him because, as I mentioned, he has more potential than the other members of the clan. I needed him to get stronger and have my eyes in order for that to happen. And you advised him to use hatred to become stronger. Wonderful, Naruto then drops another bomb on him. He has gone to Orochimaru for the power to kill you, and it doesn't matter to him as long as you were dead. You didn't murder the whole clan by yourself, did you? You received assistance, even if he is a genius like Uchiha Itachi, a 14. Year old cannot kill so many people by himself. Naruto is a little taken aback by that statement, but he quickly transforms into an emotionless mask. The torture goes on. I don't know from where you are drawing these conclusions Naruto.kun but they are all wrong. As soon as Naruto heard that, he thought, you would have fooled someone else, Itachi, but bad luck for that. I can sense people's emotions that I got from the Kyubi. I will find the truth of what went wrong with the kid who loved my mother as an aunt. In the actual world after being placed in Itachi's visual genjutsu for a few seconds, Kakashi saw Naruto collapse to his knees, gasping for air. How are you, Naruto? He asks him. Naruto tries to stand up but eventually succeeds. Yes, I'm alright. While breathing heavily, Naruto responds, but he really got me. I can't risk him fighting even though he isn't on the ground like I was the last time or unconscious from the Tsukuyomi, Kakashi muses. You stay back, Naruto, and let me deal with it. As he goes through hand signals, Kakashi gives the order. Sakura check Naruto to make sure he is okay. Sakura then moves Naruto close to a tree and performs a medical scan on him. When Sakura hears Kakashi fight with Itachi, she is startled out of her reverie. He smells so nice from this close and I can feel his muscles right now. But he has been quite detached from me since he returned and blocked my punch earlier as well. Maybe I did something that he is acting towards me like this. I should ask him but not at this time, she muses. Kanais cling to one another as they fight, and Itachi throws a fireball at him, hitting Kakashi squarely. Sakura feels dread, but she exhales in relief when Kakashi leaps from the ground beneath Itachi to try to punch him, but he avoids the blow. Kakashi then jumps back a little and makes hand gestures in midair, saying. Sweden. Kirigakir no jutsu, it would have worked on regular shinobi's kakashi.san but with my sharingan, I can easily pick up your movement, Itachi says to him. I know but the goal was to blind your vision even if it is little. Itachi appeared interested in that, and as he felt a kanai flying toward his head, he turned his head to the left, assuming it was just another kanai, but was taken aback when he felt a sharp pain in his stomach. In a whisper that only he can hear, Naruto says, consider yourself lucky that I want to know the truth about the Uchiha clan massacre or the sword would have flown through your neck. Itachi grins as thinly as he can and drops to the ground, saying, to think that you would be able to do the fourth's prized jutsu, 
you are really his son Naruto.kun. The fog clears, and Kakashi, Sakura, and Shio emerge to find him fine and Itachi on the ground with his face on the dirt. As Naruto reflects, damn you for treating me like a kid and calling me Naruto.kun. Also, that small smile of yours at my accomplishment confirms that there is a bigger picture behind your actions otherwise why would you be happy when you were ordered to capture me? Naruto is determined to find everything, even if it means breaking into the Hokage's office to steal some files that are not meant for ordinary shinobi to see. I'm glad he's dead. In an attempt to conceal her mistake, Sakura says, now we can convince Sasuke.kun to come back to the village and stay with me. Oh, I mean us, yes. Naruto shakes his head at her, she had his respect as a shinobi, though that depended on the circumstance. Naruto turns the man over with his leg to reveal a different person wearing the cloak. This is not Itachi, he wouldn't have died so easily and with just a stab of my katana. Naruto says as Sakura and Shio stare at him bewildered, while Kakashi had likely come to the same conclusion. How is he doing at the Uchiha's place? He's a Sanagakure, born Jonin. Shio asks, perplexed by the entire situation. Perhaps one of the Akatsuki members could use him as bait by revealing Itachi's face in some way? Sakura queries. No, he shared his Mangekyu Sharingan and its powers with him. Naruto adds, he could not have the memories of the real Itachi either. It looks like a jutsu that creates the exact duplicates of them which they are somehow able to control from someplace and knows the knowledge of their jutsus, Kakashi says. Naruto tells them, whatever the jutsu is, it was clearly a diversion to stop and we have wasted a good 20 minutes here, we need to move, as they begin to run to the cave. A crow, with a sharingan implanted in its left eye, watches them from a nearby tree. Within the cavern Kisame and Itachi both opened their eyes simultaneously. It looks like you were finished as well, Kisame remarks. Hi, I ran out of chakra fighting them. Hey, those things only had 30% of our chakra in them, says Kisame. Doesn't matter. Only 10 minutes are left in the ceiling and they will take time in reaching here and opening the cave, the leader tells them. Didera, Sasori I want you both to fight them when they reach the cave. Didera says, hi leader. Sama, and then turns to face Itachi. Itachi, can you tell me how strong the Kayubi Jinchuriki was and what he looks like? He was caught in my Genjutsu with ease, so he was the first out, they didn't ask which Genjutsu now, did they? Itachi tells him. He has blonde hair with red tips and is wearing a black cloak on him, half. Lying about the genjutsu part to make them underestimate Naruto. Naruto is back. When they arrived at a clearing, they noticed water running through a gully and saw Team Guy standing close to a boulder. Guy said, you are late, Kakashi, and he made his teammates turn around so that Team 7 could land in the water. As Kakashi responds to him, well, you see, we got caught up in something troublesome along the way. Kakashi. You don't mean me by troublesome, do you? Chio remarks in jest. Instead, Naruto said, Oh he does, believe me, he does, which made Kakashi smile slightly beneath his mask. Kakashi, should we do this now? Guy inquires, most likely the few times he was sincere. Hi, Kakashi nods. Guy puts some distance between them and rushes to strike the boulder, but Naruto effortlessly stops him by holding out his right hand to hold his fist. Guy. Sensei, it's useless because it has a barrier seal on it. Not noticing the confused expression on Team Guy's and Kakashi's faces as he halted his punch, Naruto says, A5. Seal barrier to be precise, as he puts his hand back under his cloak. Hi, he is right, Shio says, giving him the impression that she is somewhat knowledgeable about sealing art. So, Naruto, how do we get rid of the seal? Tenten queries him. In the north, south, west, and east directions, there are four more tags similar to this one. We would have to take off all the tags at once in order to enter the cave, Naruto tells them. As a seal master and all, is it not possible for you to simply override the seal in some way, Naruto? He shakes his head in response when Kakashi asks him a question. It will require a significant amount of time for me to first comprehend how the seal and the other four tags function. That must also be counted. Because this barrier seal is so intricate, it will take a long time to create a counter seal. Everyone on Kakashi's team nods and rushes to their destination. All right then, guy, you move along with your team in the directions of these tags and the four of you along with me will be on wireless radio for removing them at the same time, Kakashi says. Twenty minutes or so later, Kakashi hears Guy talk through his microphone. I have arrived at my position. I'm Neji. I'm in a position. Gosh. I've also found mine. This is Tenten. I've also arrived at my location. All right, team guy. 
Take off the tags when the count reaches 3. 1, 2, 3. Kakashi takes off the tag on number 3 and leaps back if something went wrong with the procedure. After a few seconds, he nods to Sakura, who rushes to punch the boulder and smash it into pieces. Kakashi gives them the all. Clear to enter while each member of Team Guy is facing a powerful clone of themselves to keep them at bay. While Chio is staring at Sasori, Kakashi says, We are late, Naruto notices Didera standing atop a bird that has Gara in its mouth. Naruto inhales deeply as he clenches and unclenches his hands slightly. You are about 30 minutes late, we already sealed the Ichibi from him, hum. When Naruto says, I don't get angry a lot of the time, but you, you are not going to see tomorrow's sun, of that I will make sure, Didera laughs and doesn't take the warning seriously. He says, you have to catch me first for that, as he and Gara fly out of the cage. You have some antidotes for his poison, and Sakura stays with Lady Chiyo while she battles her grandson. With me, Kakashi. Sensei, Naruto murmurs to them before rushing outside to pursue Didera. As he follows Naruto out, Kakashi takes off his headband to reveal his Sharingan, and they watch as he pulls a small bird out of his hand and see Didera in the air on his clay bird. Explore true art because it is exploding, with that, he hurled the bird at them, and as Kakashi and Naruto leapt sideways to avoid it, its size grew in a puff of smoke. They heard Didera say, Katsu, as the clay bird exploded close by. As he watches him fly away from them, Naruto muses, he uses his hands somehow to make objects of clay that can explode. And the size can vary seeing the bird change its size mid.air. His left hand is missing, probably Gara did it. After 10 minutes of chasing him and avoiding a variety of explosive birds, Didera stopped when they came to a wide clearing, turned to face them, put his right hand in his pouch, and began gathering clay. He says, try and dodge this for a change, chakra level C1 explosives, and then he makes a number of tiny clay balls and throws them at Kakashi and Naruto. Naruto throws his left hand in their direction and uses the seal on his left wrist to release a chain of senbons while using his right hand to perform a few single, hand seals. Raiden. Senbon Sutorimu, Senbon Stream Lighting Style. Only one senbon remains after the clay balls are impaled by the lightning chakra. Coated senbons, which then explode. Why did you let Naruto blow up one of them? Kakashi inquires, intrigued. I wanted to put something to the test. I was curious as to whether or not the explosive jutsus he employs are earth. Style. When a lightning strike passed through those clay balls, they did not explode. His rapid analysis of the opponent's attacks impressed Kakashi, who learns that lightning, based jutsus will work against him. Naruto. How did you find it so fast? Naruto grinned slightly at that. It would have taken me about five minutes to figure it out. In any case, Sensei, we need long, range lightning jutsus to defeat him. Naruto tells Kakashi, I read in the bingo book that he is an Iwa missing ninja and that he used earth release for his attacks. I have one, but it takes a while to get to him. Those kinds of attacks are not something I have either. Can't you teleport behind him and throw your three? Prong Kanai at him, Naruto? He is so high in the air that he could easily maneuver past the Kanai, leaving me hanging in midair, so it wouldn't help us. While attempting to detect any additional Didera attacks, Naruto tells him that it would be fairly simple to kill him if he is on land by using my katana to channel Raiden Chakra. Kakashi has an idea for that. Then we have to find a way to bring him down from his bird. Are you both ignoring me, oi, oi? They both attack the clay thingy with kicks and punches first, but Kakashi cuts one with a kanai dropping it on the ground, and Naruto draws his sword and channels lightning chakra through it, cutting it into pieces. I will show you, Didera says, dropping a large amount of clay on the ground, which then materializes into a couple of disfigured bodies and rushes to them. However, a line of clay connects them, and the pieces they cut grew into more bodies and encircled them both. Sensing trouble, Kakashi and Naruto swiftly execute Kawarimi with various logs just in time to see the group of clay explode, producing a large smoke screen. Naruto sheaths his sword and looks around to take advantage of the situation. This is not working sensei, we need to do something about it, he says. Naruto nods in agreement and makes a clone to look after Gara while he pursues Didera. Naruto, I will kill the bird in one shot, but you will have to do the rest because it will take a lot out of me. He observes as Kakashi pushes more chakra into his Sharingan eye, which transforms and takes on a new shape. A. N. I'm not sure how to explain a Mangekyu Sharingan pattern, if I did, you wouldn't be reading this. Didara's view was obscured by the smoke from the explosion, and he saw his clay bird swirling and being sucked into something. Naruto watched in awe as a piece of the bird vanished from the air, 
briefly forgetting his duty, and regained his bearings when the clone grabbed a falling Gara and jumped away with him. In an instant, the real Naruto was on Didara, striking him in the stomach with a Rasengan. He looked down to see Didara's head solidifying from the clay left by the bird, but to his surprise, he had transformed into a clay clone and had caught his arm in it. A hand catches his right leg. You assumed I would fall so quickly, huh? I'm always ready for anything. Sharingan no Kakashi, your partner, has stopped using that strange jutsu. He suffered greatly as a result. Let's now observe how you will handle this. It's really over this time. Consume my C4, Didera shouts. Since Naruto was not in the best of physical condition after overcoming Itachi's Sukuyomi and was unable to free his right arm through the clone's stomach, he chews the clay in his mouth and creates an inflated copy of himself that covers his entire body. You seem to be lacking in chakra, huh? You're so weak that you can't even dodge. What? Inside your arm and your whole body are invisible C4 explosives that will explode your whole body, Jinchuriki or not. Kakashi was standing, having just recovered from the exhaustion of using the Kamui for the first time, when he saw Naruto totally absorbed by the clay body of Didera. Didera asks him as he steps away from him, watching the Kayubi Jinchuriki trapped in his C4 explosive. As Naruto mulls over his options, Didera forms the half ram sign and yells, Katsu, to see the area where Naruto was exploding. He has explosives all inside my body. Even if I somehow leave this inflated copy of his and free my hand from the clone, he could easily explode me. Even the Kayubi's chakra would not help me. I have to think of something fast, he says. He thought he had won and was going to try to run away from Kakashi if he could, but he was punched in the chin from below. He flew for a while and landed a few feet away to see Naruto standing there with some burnt marks on his hand and face, but his clothes had also begun to mend themselves and they had begun to heal with the help of the Kayubi's chakra. How? How were you able to avoid my C4 blast? I had never made art as good as that. I witnessed the C4 explosive body capturing you, indicating that they were inside of you. How did you make it through the explosion? Didera yells as she poses the query. As it turns out, Doden. Style Jutsus are weak against Raiden. Style Jutsus, and guess who has Raiden as their chakra nature? I had figured out the fundamentals of your Jutsus. In order to render the explosives ineffective, I employed an A-rank technique known as Raiden. Heki no Jutsu. Lightning Burst Technique. And directed electric current throughout my body, Naruto explained, omitting the part in which he needed to request some chakra from the Kayubi. That isn't feasible. It is believed that only Reikages possess the ability to channel Raiden Chakra through their bodies. Didera yells, you are obviously lying, not trusting his response. For many hours, they are able to continuously channel their Raiden Chakra throughout their body. This doesn't give me the speed that it gives them, and I can only hold it for 30 minutes at most. There is obviously another method to increase their speed. It's finished for you now, Didera, Naruto declares as he makes a Rasengan with just one hand and thrusts it into his stomach. As he watched, Didera flew off, smashing a few trees in his path, and Naruto approached him, Kakashi breathing heavily and following him. Didara's clothing was torn around his stomach, and blood was streaming from the corner of his mouth and from there. Kayubi no Jinchuriki, you deserve the credit for putting me in this predicament. He begins eating the clay himself and begins to swell up a little after saying, but this is the end of the road for you. I don't care if I am not allowed to kill a Jinchuriki like you, I will take you down with me. Sensing the danger, Naruto and Kakashi made a hasty attempt to flee, but they were unable to outrun it. As the explosion approached, Naruto watched helplessly, unable to throw Hiraishin Kanai quickly enough to escape and leave Kakashi alone, but his death never came because he saw the same swirling in the air from before, sucking in the explosion. He glances to the side and sees that Kakashi is using his Mangekyu Sharingan and some of its space. Time Abilities Naruto orders the clone with Gara to take him to Suna so that, at the very least, they can bury him somewhere. He catches Kakashi as he stumbles back due to exhaustion. Kakashi says, he blew, himself up just, to kill us with him, what a mad lad, in between heavy pants. Naruto was about to nod when he noticed some emotion and concern in the person's body. He looks around and notices a movement close to a bush, and he quickly shunshin kicks Didera back in the clearing. You made a valiant attempt to trick us into believing that you committed suicide, but it was unsuccessful. I told you that I would kill you for what you did to Gara, didn't I? Naruto says, glancing at him. Taking the last of the clay from his pouch, he feeds it into the mouth on his chest, saying, I thought that I would be able to escape and fight another day but I guess not, before taking off his mesh shirt, which lets the two leaf ninjas see a strange, large mouth close to his heart. 
This is the end for both of you, he says, because he is exhausted from using his jutsu earlier, Kakashi will not be able to use it. Try to get away from this. The blast radius is 2 kilometers. See my masterpiece. A. N. Since Didera will ultimately be brought back to life by the Edo. Tensai. I have chosen to kill him a little earlier than his cannon. Because he wasn't used to using his Mangekyu in a real battle, Kakashi was anxious and attempted to activate it once more. Naruto teleports to Kakashi after having a quick thought. As Kakashi puts his hand on Naruto's shoulder, he says, don't question at such a time sensei, place a hand on my shoulder, and performs rapid hand seals. Gyaku Kachiyose no jutsu, they vanish in a cloud of smoke, and when they reappear two minutes later, they see a huge creator in the forest. Naruto walks around a little and finds a ring on the ground that has the kanji, say, which means, blue. He puts the ring in his pocket because he believes that everything the Akatsuki uses has a purpose. He approaches Kakashi and says. How are you doing, Sensei? Yes. Reverse calling us to the land of toads was a clever move, and Naruto smiles at him. Thanks for the compliment, but I underestimated him twice because I was too confident. Naruto looks at Kakashi and says, I just assumed that he died when you told us on our first mission that as ninjas we have to expect the worst. Will you be able to walk, or should we wait for a bit? He asks. I won't be able to run for a while, but I will be able to walk. Gara is where? Kakashi puts a hand on his shoulder and says, I told my clone to take him to Suna and, I didn't know what else to do with it, but he was having trouble coming up with a reply. We tried our best Naruto. You tried your absolute best but you have to understand that you can't save everyone. He says, H. Hi Sensei, and then he walks back towards Suna while wiping a single tear from his cheek. He looks down and sees that his cloth is fine, with only dust on it despite all the explosions going on. I suppose the self, healing and durability seals that were applied to them worked. After 20 minutes of running from tree to tree, they finally land in a clearing where they can observe a circle of San Shinobi, including Tamari, Sakura, and Team Guy, standing close to Gara while Chio sits next to him and attempts to, wait, heal him. Naruto asks no one, what does she want to accomplish with the jutsu she is trying to do? Kayubi responds to him, she is reviving the case cage from the dead with a jutsu. Long time no see, long time no hear, whatever, you get the idea. Oh Kayubi, is there a jutsu that can bring people back to life like the, Edo, Tensai? The Kayubi tells him that she is offering her life in return for his, explaining that it is the, Kisho Tensai, jutsu, one's own life reincarnation. You certainly know a lot about a variety of topics, huh? However, because of a recent altercation, it appears that the elderly woman lacks the chakra necessary to perform the jutsu, only you possess it. He takes a moment to think, then moves forward and sits on his knees, pressing his right hand over hers and pushing his chakra through it. I apologize for being a little impolite to you earlier, but thank you. He looks around and sees a lot of people, then a blonde mop of hair with a hint of red that was covered in black. He opens his eyes groggily and sees who it is to see Naruto standing close to him with a slight smile. Thank you for considering doing this, Naruto says looking at Gara as Chiyo smiles at him and completes the technique. Sakura grabs hold of her body as Tamari helps Gara stand. Is that you, Naruto? Naruto waves at him before bowing. At your service, Kei's cage. Sama, causing a small smile to spread across the surrounding population. However, when Tamari tells Gara about Chiyo, he asks, they captured me and I felt it, Shukaku leaving my body. Chiyo. Ba. Sama, she traded her life for yours using a jutsu. She stated that she would gladly do it because she had lived long enough. Gara observed her for a short while before he said. They all bowed their heads and remained silent for a minute, saying, Everyone, please, bow your head and stay in silence for her sacrifice. Why am I feeling this way? I should be happy that Gara is alive and well, but I can't show it. The sadness behind her sacrifice right now is more significant than the joy that he is alive, Naruto muses. Kakashi says, well, Team 7 and Team Guy, let's head back for Konoha so we can report to the Hokage as soon as possible, as Lee and Guy begin yelling that they must hurry to Konoha. I have to insist that you all stay and take a short break. Tamari nods in agreement as Gara says, you can spend two days in the village and depart for Konoha the day after tomorrow. Kakashi Sensei, why are you in such a rush? It should have taken us two or three days to get to Suna, but we arrived in a day and a half. Didn't we then engage in combat with an S-rank ninja? Sakura and Tenten sigh with relief at not having to run again after such a demanding day, as Naruto says this. 
Naruto. This was a crucial mission. We had to react right away to a village emergency in Suna. Kakashi responds. We can't rest here when Tsunade. Sama would be worried and want any information on the mission. Naruto smirks, bites his thumb, and performs rapid hand seals. Kachiyose no jutsu. Everyone checked the scene again when a tiny slug appeared on the ground in a puff of smoke. Good evening, Katsuyu. Sama. Could you please inform Ba? Chan that the case cage. Retrieval mission has been successful and that neither team has suffered any casualties. We'll take today and tomorrow off before departing for Konoha the day after yesterday, arriving there in three days. After saying, I will do so Naruto.kun, she disappears in a cloud of smoke, and Naruto turns to face the people who were staring at him. When you first fought me, didn't you call forth a toad? Gara queries him. Look, the tasks are completed, we can relax and explore the village while the Hokage obtains the necessary information, so what's the harm? The others nod, not bothering to ask him any more questions. Returning to Sanagakure they had gone back to the village and reserved a few rooms at the hotel for the night and tomorrow. Naruto had made the decision to go for a walk late at night, when the majority of the village was asleep and there were only a few shinobis patrolling the areas. He was simply taking in the refreshing night breeze and reflecting on the day's events. As Naruto kicks a stone that was in the way, he muses, so the Akatsuki is on the move, they have the one. Tailed beast Shukaku and with me being the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, there are seven like me and Gara left. Hopefully, Arrow. Senen is able to get some information about them, he muses. Naruto tells the beast, they have one of your brothers is it, E.H. Kayubi. Don't lump him in with me, he isn't my brother, brat, Kayubi replies. Naruto answers him, oh, stop talking. I don't know the whole truth about your origins, but I can bet on your ass that wherever you all came from was a common source. Ninjin, you can think whatever you want, I can't stop you from doing that, can I? He says, you know that calling you Kayubi is really annoying, come on, tell me your name. That's my name. Humans gave it to me and I kept it, Kayubi tells him. The one tail is called Shukaku, isn't he? Tell me, please. Do you really think of me as a fool? It would have worked on my 13. You're not old self but not me. And why should an arrogant whelp like you know my name? Naruto begs him, come on, it's not fair. You know my name too, but never call me by that. I also won't call you by your name until you say so. All right, the Kayubi says, looking at him intently as he listens, my name is. I am neither a human nor a shinobi who must listen to you, haha. <laughs> Dude, I was really into it. Fuck you. Well, I'm going to call you, Furball, from now on until you tell me your name. Don't you dare call me that, you pathetic human. I will not be disrespected by you like that, Kayubi tells him, but he just smiles. A crow with a sharingan is perched atop a tree outside his window as he jokes, hi, hi. I get it, and makes the decision to go to bed. Both teams had arrived in Konoha after two days of travel. There was no rush to get back, so they were moving at a moderate pace. As they arrived at Konoha's gates, their senseis were completing a form that the gate guards had given them with the team's information when an anbu materialized in front of them. After saying, Team 7 and Team Guy, Hokage. Sama has requested your presence as soon as you return from the mission, he bowed briefly and walked away. Guy and Lee chased after them at full speed as they departed in a shunshin, or in Naruto's case, a yellow flash. Kakashi knocked on the door of her office, and they all entered after hearing the come in, team aide was already inside when they arrived one by one, most likely to request a mission. For some reason, seeing Naruto made Kurenai happier, but she stopped herself when she noticed everyone else in the room. While team aide was also eager to learn more about the S-rank mission, Tsunade said, team 7 and team guy. I received Naruto's message from Katsuyu but I would like to hear it from all of you about the S-rank mission. That would be the mission for you, Kurenai and team. Please leave the room, she said. Kiba yelled, we would also like to hear about the mission, before realizing he had spoken a little too loudly, if you would allow Hokage. Sama, that is. Tsunade answered, okay, I don't see any reason not to. As this was happening, Naruto approached the Hokage portraits on their left and raised the picture frame of his father. Naruto put a Hiraishin seal marker on the back of his portrait, drawing everyone's attention in the room. She asked him, somewhat perplexed by his behavior, what are you doing, Naruto? As he put the frame back and turned slightly in her direction. What, can't a son see his father's picture? Anyways, I was placing a seal on it so the next time I have to come and meet you, I can directly teleport in here rather than near the Hokage building. By the way, where is Aero? Senen? 
I haven't seen him in a while, Naruto says to her. He heard the news of the K's cage being captured and went to gather information about the Akatsuki seeing as they have decided to start their movement and target the Jinchurikis, Tsunade tells him. Ahem. About the mission, we left for Suna as soon as you assigned the mission to Team 7 and we met Tamari in the middle of our journey. It took us a day and a half to reach Suna. Once there, we learned about the situation and the members of Akatsuki involved in his capture, Kakashi informs her while nodding at the data. Next to speak is Sakura. Konkuro, Gara's brother was injured and heavily poisoned when we reached the hospital, he was poisoned by, Sasori of the Red Sands. I checked his body condition and removed the toxin from his body. Then with the help of a few of their medic ninjas, I prepared an antidote for the poison and gave it to him while carrying two extra doses of it with me. Naruto remarks, examining his black nails and lightly polishing them, when Konkuro gave him a piece of Sasori's cloth, Kakashi. Sensei summoned his ninja dogs to track the scent of the two Akatsuki members. When we got the location of a cave from Pakun, we left to search for him with Chiyo, an advisor of Suna accompanying us. Tsunade gave him a worried look as Kakashi remarked, however, on the way to their hiding place, we met Uchiha Itachi and were forced to fight him while Naruto here got trapped in his Tsukuyomi. She couldn't understand how he was able to battle an Akatsuki member after that. After performing one of his Mangeku Sharingan Genjutsu, Kakashi was hospitalized for a week. Naruto says, it was because of the Kayubi that I did not suffer much from the Genjutsu and Sakura checked for any injuries on me after that, so I was fine, preventing her from inquiring about the details of his torture or the Genjutsu. Hi, our team also encountered Kiri missing ninja, Kisame Hoshigaki on our way. The three of us were captured in a water prison while Guy. Sensei fought him as he opened the sixth gate, but there was something different about him, Neji says at the end. The ones we fought were not the real Itachi and Kisame. They had used an impersonation jutsu on two of the San Shinobis and their main aim was to slow us down from reaching the cave, Naruto continues. Yash. We saw a 5. Barrier seal on the boulder of the cave which had four other tags in different places. My team went to remove them but as soon as we did that, some super. Enhanced clones formed before us, Guy informs her. His teammates nod in agreement. Each of us faced one of those clones and they had abilities very similar to us. We had a hard time defeating them and by the time we did, both the Akatsuki members were already dead. It was a trap set up for anyone who removed the four seals, Tenten tells everyone. So that leaves Kakashi's team against the two Akatsuki members, Tsunade explains. Hi, we went in the cave to see Gara already dead with Didera and Sasori inside there. Didera flew upon a clay bird with Gara in the bird's mouth as I and Naruto chased after him while Sakura and Lady Chiyo fought Sasori, Kakashi informs her. I fought him with Lady Chiyo as she wanted to see her grandson after 20 years while I had a couple of antidotes for his poison. I tried to stop him and punched him in the chest to do some damage but it turned out to be a puppet. The real Sasori was hiding inside it and he had turned his whole body into a puppet to live for this long and his body or face did not change even a bit over the years according to Lady Chiyo. He then took out a puppet in the form of the third case cage. We both had to use the antidote for his poison attack and in the end, somehow managed to defeat him. While dying, he told me the location where he would be meeting one of Orochimaru's spy at. Sakura speaks with a smile at the end. She turned to face Naruto, expecting to see him beaming with any news about Sasuke, but was let down when she saw nothing. Tsunade asks her, what information did he give you regarding Orochimaru and his spy? In hopes of finally learning something about Sasuke after three years, she tells her, Sasori said that we have to be on the Tenchi Bridge in Kusagakure to meet the spy two months from today. After learning about the Kanabi Bridge, Kakashi muses, Kusagakur, we had to destroy the Kanabi Bridge during the Third Great Ninja War. I was chasing the mad bomber from Iwa, Didera, with Kakashi Sensei. He was just flying and keeping his distance from us. He was on a constant move and I didn't have any long range ninjutsu to attack him. My Hiriishin Kanai would have just flown past him while he was moving, Naruto tells her. Naruto was very impressive, to say the least. This was his first mission as a Jonin and that 2s ranked. He had kept his calm and analyzed the weakness of his opponent's jutsus quickly as well, Kakashi says of Naruto. I had to use the second stage of my Sharingan to bring him down from his clay bird as a clone of Naruto caught Gara and took him to Suna. He used a couple of his jutsus in between the fight but when he was on the ground I hit him with a Rasengan. Turned out to be a Didera that was just a clone and he tried to blow me up using that, he casually recounts as the majority of those in the room stare at him with concern. But I managed to survive that. 
Then he tried to blow himself up along with us in it but Sensei again used his Sharingan to save us. It was just a decoy from him to make us think that he blew himself up and try and escape. Naruto was able to sense him and foiled his plans but the next time he was dead set on blowing us apart and leaving no traces, Kakashi says, without bothering to glance up from his manuscript. Tsunade inhales deeply to comprehend everything. That guy was so weird. He had a kind of mouth near his heart area, Naruto says as the others struggle and throw up. He fed it some clay of his as his heart started blacking out as his body became transparent first and then his whole body blacked out and he told us that the blast would cover a radius of 2 kilometers. Naruto says, that guy was so weird. He had a kind of mouth near his heart area. So let me get this straight, Team Kakashi faced two Akatsuki members and killed them with the help of a Suna advisor. Not that I don't believe any of you but does any one of you have something to prove it? Tsunade interrupts them. Suna took the puppet of Sasori back with them to study it or something so you can always ask them about it. Also, I took the rings both the Akatsuki members wore on their fingers. Didera had the one with the kanji for, say, on it meaning blue while Sasori's has the kanji for, Gyoku, meaning ball, Naruto informs her as she demonstrates the rings. And what about the case cage? He was dead when the one tails was extracted from him but Naruto told Katsuyu that the mission was a success, Tsunade asks them. About that Tsunade. Sama, after our fight, we had caught up with a group of sand ninjas who were around his body. When Lady Chio saw him, she told me that she would perform a jutsu to save his life at her life's cost. She didn't have enough chakra after our fight with Sasori to complete the jutsu but by that time Naruto and Kakashi. Sensei had arrived and Naruto gave her some of his chakra for the jutsu, Sakura relates. Team 8 was the first to leave the room, with the exception of one member who was preoccupied with watching Naruto. Sad, but anyways, Team 7 and Team Guy, well done on successfully completing the mission. Take a week's rest to restore your energy and return to duty. I will look into the matter of the spy Sakura told us about. Because of the seal he created to prevent her by Kugan from working on him, she was unable to follow him and was forced to keep an eye on him whenever she saw him. After Team Guy left the office, Guy and Lee started competing and putting their young people to the test. When the Hokage spoke, Team 7 was about to depart as well. And Naruto, I was worried a lot about you going against the Akatsuki on your own but I don't think I need to worry much. Oh no, you will need to keep worrying. These two were among the weaker of the Akatsuki, with them having Uchiha Itachi and Hoshigaki Kisame amongst them. Orochimaru was once with them before he betrayed the group and I wouldn't be able to beat or kill him. He is as slippery as a snake, Naruto informs her. Although he was certain of his skills and knowledge, he would not claim to be able to defeat them all. Heck, they were unaware of the Akatsuki leader's identity or skills, and then there was the man in the mask, who identified himself as, Uchiha Madara. Sakura sort of begs the Hokage for the mission, saying, please let Team 7 talk to Sasori's spy, Lady Tsunade. We might be able to get some information about Sasuke.kun from him. He is a very important person for this team. He looks directly at her and asks, who said that? Who told you that Sasuke is an important person for me? I don't consider someone important to me when they try to kill me twice in an hour on the same day. I won't go on this stupid mission, as a matter of fact, any mission that concerns him. If the Hokage doesn't give the mission to Kakashi. Sensei then he won't go as well. So if you want to risk your life because you have a crush on him, you are allowed to do as you wish, Naruto asks, leaving her with no idea of his thoughts on the subject. Don't say that Naruto. Three years ago I had only agreed to train her because she promised me not to be a fangirl and get over her stupid crush on Sasuke and learn whatever I taught her seriously. Is that not true Sakura? She inquires. Sakura felt a little apprehensive about the change in subject. I d dot did Tsunade. Sama. I didn't want to be weak and wanted to help in any way I could, she says. He mockingly adds her name and asks, oh, was that the only reason why you trained under her, Sakura? Chan, or was it because the night Sasuke left, you were alone with him and couldn't do anything to stop him? Was it because you were weak then and now think that you have a chance of stopping him with the training you have done under the Hokage? Sakura was unable to respond because it was true. She trained not only to avoid weakness but also to demonstrate her strength to Sasuke. There was silence in the room as everyone waited for her to say something. Tell me Sakura. Say it on my face right now that you don't love him, say it. Look at that. She has nothing to say because she still loves a rogue ninja, a traitor who went for power to the same person who killed the Sandame Hokage. And to think that she made everyone believe including you Ba, Chan that she was over him. I bet she trained this hard under you so that the next time she is not able to convince Sasuke to come back, 
she will follow him instead. Tsunade and Shizun were taken aback by when Kakashi discovered that Naruto could sense various emotions and would express them himself, he was about to stop him from further humiliating her. Sakura was perspiring as she recalled the moment three years prior when she had attempted to stop Sasuke from leaving and, when he refused to listen, she had begged him to take her with him, she had just been knocked out after he called her annoying. I had taken a wild guess on the last part but she really wanted to do it, she would leave the village and become a rogue ninja for a stupid crush who doesn't even love her back. When did you tell Sasuke about following him, huh Sakura? Was it when you last talked with him? Sakura stopped hearing it and ran out of the room in tears. Tsunade was shocked to learn that Sakura was now her apprentice, a fangirl. Look, I may have been harsh and she may be a fantastic medic but I will not risk my life while on a mission if Sasuke could be there as well. Who is to say that she won't leave the village to follow him? She was ready to turn a traitor back then along with him, what do you think has changed now? She didn't deny any of the questions, did she? Out of all the shinobis and kunoichis in the village ba. Chan, you chose the worst possible person to make your apprentice. She may be good at doing Irio. Ninjutsu but she would never reach your level or pass you in terms of skill, with that Naruto left the room to go and rest in his house after five days. While Tsunade had a lot to consider in the paperwork to finish, the others left the office, following his lead. From behind, he heard someone yell his name, Naruto, and turned to see Kurenai standing there. He approaches her, unsure of her desires. He smiles at her and asks, Yes Kurenai. Nay, Chan, is there something you want from me? You remembered what we decided on huh, Naruto, Chan? Naruto reminds her, I just agreed to it, it's not us, it was you who decided it. She waits for him to give her a cheek kiss, as she had previously instructed, but he obviously forgot. Naruto makes his brain try to remember anything from the day before it finally dawns on him, did you forget what I told you else to do? He leans in to kiss both of her cheeks as he notices her beaming with happiness, he sighs and says. Do we really have to do it? That too in the public. I already had a few fangirls here and there but the village now knows about my heritage, is it necessary? Ah, don't worry Naruto. Chan. I am going on a date with Asuma tomorrow, maybe it will work between us, so till then, you don't have to do it. Just a hug will work, she says as she strokes his cheek. But who is stopping me from doing so? Anyways, I have to go and meet Anko in a bit, so see you. For his own sake, Naruto chooses to take the roof on his way home after simply shaking his head at the entire circumstance. Now that they were aware of his parents, he didn't want to meet people who treated him like a plague and fall in love with him. An assortment of hypocrites. He sees Konohamaru and his friends leaving the academy as he runs from roof to roof. He hadn't met them yet, had he not? He silently approaches the trio from behind and gives them a shoulder poke. Nothing is visible behind them when they turn around. After Konohamaru shrugged his shoulder, they turned around once more and were startled to see someone yelling. Boo! While sporting an odd mask. They hugged each other tightly and screamed in terror before falling butt first to the ground. Naruto laughed at the three on the ground and took off the henge mask he had put on himself. He was laughing and holding his stomach while a few tears were streaming from the corner of his eyes. Boss, was yelled at him the next second, and three children embraced him. He halted himself, balanced his weight, and gave them a hug in return. He grinned at seeing them after all this time. After a few seconds, they withdrew. Konohamaru asks, where were you, boss? We heard you had returned and tried to find you, as Udon and Moegi give him nods. I returned a week ago or something and then had to go on an important mission. It took me and the team five days to complete it, so you see, I wasn't in the village for a while, he informs them. Moegi asks him, are you really the son of the Yandaimi Hokage? When he sees that all three of the children have stars in their eyes, he nods in response. Konohamaru exclaims, sweet. Our boss is the son of the greatest hero of our village. Udon nods in agreement as he explains, you have his eyes and hair color although there is a bit of red in it now. It makes sense. They pout at that, and Naruto ruffles their hair a little. So, what have you three been up to? Have you become ninjas or still attending the academy? We became shinobis and started doing missions two months ago, but we are made to do stupid d rank missions for the village, Konohamaru informs him. Tell me about all of that. So, you three somehow on the same team or not? We are luckily on the same team, boss. Our sensei is a closet pervert though according to Konohamaru.kun. His name is Ebisu, Moegi informs him. Well, it's good as well as bad, but that's all right. When I have the free time, I will teach you three something, he said, and they all had stars in their eyes once more. And please don't call me boss, 
Call me Oni. Chan or something. He then disappeared in a yellow flash, leaving them in awe of what they thought was an awesome jutsu. After two months Naruto got up early and proceeded to the restroom to bathe and brush his teeth. The past two months had flown by, with sporadic missions that lacked the thrill of his first mission. Battling bandits who attempted to stop him while delivering crucial scrolls or documents. Taking on the role of backup on a few occasions when teams requested it and he was available for the mission. He wasn't particularly challenged by any of the missions. He covered his torso with a white t-shirt and put on dark grey shinobi pants. In order for those who saw him to at least acknowledge his rank and not mistake him for a genin, he had made the decision to wear the janin vest over it. He put on his black shoes and applied some bandages to his knees and ankles. Katsuyu unexpectedly showed up at his table as he was eating breakfast and getting ready to work out and train a little. Naruto.kun, Lady Tsunade has an important mission for you to do. Please meet her in the Hokage's office, she stated. She indicates that the mission is challenging when she asks Katsuyu to call me. I should get ready for this, he thinks, securing his katana around his waist. He pulls on his black cloak, concealing his sword and reaching his knees, and fastens the button close to his neck. When he teleports into her office, he discovers that four other individuals have left. He was unaware of the identities of the other two, but two of them were Kakashi and Sakura. So where are Kakashi? Sensei and Sakura going? And who were the other two with them? She responds to him. They are going to Tenchi Bridge and meet the spy of Sasori, possibly get some information from him. Fair enough, as much as I say that I don't care about Sasuke, I don't want Orochimaru to take over his body and have the Sharingan. That would be dangerous. Hi, that is why I sent two more people with them. With you not going with them and Sasuke having left a spot on the team, I ordered Yamato to go with them while Danzo wanted a member of his route to be in the team, his name is Sai. Probably wanted to keep him in the team that had me in it to report about me to him and if I posed any threats. Ha, huh, jokes on him though, I am not even in that team. Whatever, I called you here for a mission. It is a very important mission Naruto. There would be risks as well. Tell me the mission details already. I had Jiraiya confirm the information that Sasori provided. Orochimaru is in Kusagakure so they will meet his spy on the bridge. You have a mission to infiltrate his base in Otogakure. His main base. Naruto did not have anything to say. Interesting. If by any chance Orochimaru is there then you are to come back immediately. Otherwise, go to his base and get any valuable information that you can about him or whatever he is planning to do. He said, well, I will be going then, and walked out of her office. Examining his wrist storage seals for his katana, senbons, and hiraishin kanais, as well as any food, water, cash, and clothing that may be needed for the mission. He starts toward the village that is concealed by the noise. The village concealed in the grass is located in the northwest of Konoha, whereas the hidden sound village is located to the north of Konoha. I should be fine since Orochimaru should be at one of his bases in Kusagakure. His journey to Otogakure had taken him two days of running with breaks. In Konoha, he had hanged into a random civilian he saw and told anyone who asked him that he was there to travel. Because he possessed Kayubi, his henge was a true transformation that greatly aided him in integrating into the village. He had wandered aimlessly around the village on his first day there, searching for hints or secret passages that might lead to Orochimaru's base. He had returned to his room early and avoided looking at night to allay suspicions. After a few more days of looking for hints and haphazardly pursuing a few shinobi to look for the base, he was unable to locate anything. That night, as he undressed his henge, he had made the decision to follow one of the patrolling shinobi. His hair didn't cause much of a problem, and his black cloak worked well for hiding and waiting in the shadows. A chakra monster like him who carried a kayubi would have as much chakra as a newborn baby thanks to the seal he applied to him, which totally concealed his chakra. Enough to survive, but not much. He watched him converse with a couple of sound ninjas while following him out of the shadows. After that, he began to walk to a remote location and stopped at a waterfall. After scanning the area for a while to see if he could spot anyone, he made a few hand signals to stop the waterfall. As he watched the waterfall continue to fall, Naruto quickly threw one of his kanai that had embedded itself behind a wall. In order to hear Ishin out of it and depart as soon as he had finished exploring the entire base, he stabbed another of his kanai close to a tree. He showed up inside the base in a yellow flash after waiting for the shinobi he was following to depart for a few minutes. He began to move forward gradually as he used his senses to find anyone nearby. He saw that he could go to the left or the right. He decided to turn left, which led to numerous rooms. A large area with numerous cages encircling it was at the end, while some of them were large. He must keep his experiment in these rooms in order to conduct additional tests on them. For many of them, 
This place is pure hell. It appears to be a sizable arena where they may test the fighting prowess of their lab rats and kill those that are not needed. However, they have become monsters and lost their humanity as a result of Orochimaru's experiment on them. Naruto muses, there's no point in granting them freedom. He sensed two people coming around the corner and quickly started heading in the opposite direction, returning to the cross. Section where he had taken a left earlier, he walked past them, hanging into the random sound ninja he had followed all the way to the waterfall. After giving him a brief glance, the other two shinobis uttered. Hey, didn't he just pass us to sleep in his room? Maybe this is someone else, are you sure that we have seen him? Yes, I am telling you this is someone else, he began, but Naruto's wind chakra. Laced katana pierced his heart before he could finish. For a moment, his partner stood there, but this was a mistake because a Naruto clone appeared behind him and used a kanai to cut his throat. He sealed the two bodies in a scroll, banished the clone, and cleaned up the mess. As he continued, he noticed three rooms with what appeared to be five people sleeping in each. The ninjas who defended this base during the day should all be among them. Leaving them alone, he turned left and came to a door that led directly into the room. He opened the door as quietly as he could, and four of the sound ninjas, possibly medic ninjas checking on things, were working inside in lab coats. He swiftly moved his left hand in their direction and killed them by striking a pressure point on their neck with senbons. After creating a clone henge and remaining outside to warn him, he sealed their bodies inside the same scroll and shut the door behind him. A couple of computer screens were in front of him when he walked into the lab. There were numerous large tubes with different animals, likely not dead, in them when he turned to his left. Numerous tiny test tubes filled with chemicals were arranged on a table, and papers were scattered all over it. As he looked at them, he noticed some notes and charts regarding various experiments conducted in this laboratory written on the paper sheets. He had no use for any of this. When he could find nothing on the room's exterior, he began searching beneath it, scanning the ground and the roof for a hidden chamber. When he approached the medium-sized library, he saw a variety of books there. Like any other bookshelf, actually. To check if there was anything behind it, he shifted the shelf slightly. When he tapped his knuckles against the wall behind it, he heard a hollow sound that would not have been produced by a solid wall. He shoved it out of the way and entered the room. At first glance, the tiny room didn't appear to be very significant. There was just a table with some papers and a diary on it. Despite this, there was a jar with a green liquid inside that contained a pair of Sharingan eyes. How is it that he has them? And why is he pursuing Sasuke's body if he is carrying these eyes? He picked up the diary and kept the vial down because he couldn't understand anything. When he opened the first page, he saw that it was a book of Orochimaru's journal or records. He read it, flipping through some of the pages. Yes. After so many years of researching and experimenting on different people, I have finally made a breakthrough. With this monumental success, I will be able to become immortal and learn all the jutsus in the world. But I will have to keep changing bodies to live that long. A small price to pay for salvation. Serutobi. Sensei found my lab in Konoha. To think that he was able to find me but the old fool didn't have the heart to kill me and finish the job. Kukuku. Now I have to prepare the jutsu that would allow me to take over other bodies making me immortal. The Sharingan will be an important tool in my quest to learn all the jutsus of the world with its ability to copy the jutsus it sees. I would need a spy in Konoha now, that would help me in getting a pair of these eyes. His way of thinking completely disgusted Naruto. Many lives were destroyed by his experiments because of his fear of dying and his desire to learn ninjutsus. It was terrible on a different level to develop a jutsu for controlling someone's body. He turned a couple of pages and paused at the one about Hashirama Senju. I got hold of the first Hokage's body and researched his body for secrets. His chakra is very potent. If his blood is injected into someone, they may die of its side. Effect before the merging of his cells is completed. Out of the 60 Konoha orphans that I experimented on by introducing his blood into their system, only one survived, Tenzo. He was the only one who lived through it and has shown the signs of performing Mokotan Keke. Jenke. I cannot risk interjecting his blood into my system. Naruto glances at the tube that holds the cells and blood of the first Hokage. He kept the tube in the jar containing the Sharingan eyes in a storage scroll inside his black cloak because he was there to gather anything significant. When he got to Konoha, he would hand them both over to Ba. Chan, who would then decide what to do with them. The Kayubi suggests that Ninjin use Hashirama's blood for himself. What? He mentioned that only one of them survived the experiment, did you not read that? Even though Orochimaru is crazy, he wouldn't be writing lies here, would he? Naruto asks him a question. It's true, he tells Naruto, 
but those children didn't have a biju inside of them from birth. How does this relate to the fact that you have been residing inside of me? Naruto asks him, but his response is inconclusive. My chakra has always been inside your body, blending with yours since the day you were born because I have been inside you from the beginning. Due to my chakra and yours, you are unable to perform medical ninjutsu. His cells would attempt to overpower your blood cells if you were to put his blood inside yours, but my chakra would work to prevent his blood cells from killing you. His blood cells would latch onto my toxic chakra and attempt to subdue it as soon as it came into contact with them, leaving your body and chakra alone, the Kyubi tells him. But when Madara fought against you, didn't he stop you from fighting with him? So, aside from a few days of fever, nothing bad will happen to you. His cells battled the experiment's body when his blood was injected into theirs, killing him. In contrast, they will battle my monovalent chakra inside of you until they are defeated, at which point they will stop. I will be able to combine his cells and DNA into your body once that is finished in your blood and his coexist, preventing you from dying. Naruto learned a lot of new information from that, who would have thought the Kyubi could accomplish all of this? Okay, so it's obvious that I won't die as a result, but what would all of this accomplish? The Kyubi simply gazed at him as though he were the most stupid person on the planet. You still act like the 13. year old fool sometimes when you ask questions like these. This will enable you to practice Mokuton ninjutsus and, if you so choose, learn medical ninjutsu. Learning to use sage jutsu like your toad sensei this will also be beneficial. Hashirama became a true sage after mastering the art of gathering natural energy around him. You could easily learn it from his cells. I understand what you're saying, and I can see the advantages, but I don't think I can pull it off. Not until I really have to give him a blood injection. However, Naruto tells him what he believes, I will remember whatever you have told me. In any case, just keep those Sharingan eyes and Hashirama's blood to yourself. You would never be able to use them if you gave them to your Hokage. My new spy, Kabuto found out about the mission given to Uchiha Itachi about the extermination of the Uchiha clan. The clan was planning on doing a coup. Deita and taking over the village so Itachi was given a mission to kill all of the clan members but he left his little brother alive. Kabuto also got three pairs of Sharingan eyes for me from their dead bodies, one of them being of Itachi's mother, Makoto Uchiha. Oh my god! He was told to murder his whole clan in one night. How was he able to endure it? I could never have killed my own parents in that way in my life. However, why? He killed members of his own clan for the benefit of the village. I suppose this is not a place where I can learn everything. He, as a Uchiha, I respect him. In one night, he killed nearly every member of that cursed clan. No, he was not able to kill the entire clan by himself. He probably wouldn't have had enough time to eliminate each and every one of them before going missing as a ninja. He must have had assistance from someone. Now it's irrelevant, isn't it? In cleaning up that clan, whoever assisted him did the right thing. Why do you detest that clan so much that you would be pleased if they all perished? The ninjas from that clan have taken me in twice. The Kyubi responds with a hint of venom in his voice, first, it was Madara during his battle with Hashirama, and then the second time was a fake, Madara, who caught me in a genjutsu to work for him using the Mangekyu Sharingan. Therefore, you can't hold the entire clan accountable for the transgressions of two individuals, can you? That clan's curse of hatred makes them dangerous. The Uchiha clan has a stronger sense of love than anyone else. Their eyes undergo great pain and transform into the Mangekyu Sharingan, which are the same eyes that can ward off bijus like me, when they lose a close friend or lover. Their intense affection for those closest to them turns into a bitter animosity toward the person who hurt them. What is the reason behind your request that I keep this pair of eyes with me? When did Itachi last mention Makoto reawakening the Mangekyu Sharingan after my mother passed away? All I'm asking is that you hold onto it to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. I didn't say you were going to put them in your eyes. Second, I have enough faith in you to know that you won't try to manipulate me. Ah, I said, but I thought you hated me and all people. Unlike your 13. Year old self, whom I detested, you are intelligent for yourself and haven't made demands of me. And I still despise the majority of people because they imprison us all in cells for centuries and then expect us to be amiable. Yes, most of the time it can be quite unpleasant to be locked up with someone and left alone. Naruto tells him, well, I'm sorry for whatever you've been through, and I hope you haven't been as bored with me as the rest of your Jinchurikis. He then reads his diary to see if there is anything else. I will have to leave the Akatsuki immediately. I tried to take over Itachi's body for myself but he caught me in a genjutsu and chopped my hand off. He is too good for me to go against him. I transplanted two pairs of the Sharingan into two test subjects and the results weren't too great. 
because they were not of the Uchiha clan. The chakra cost of using their eyes is too much. I cannot waste the last pair of Sharingan eyes like that and also, I cannot transplant those eyes into me because of the chakra cost. I will have to try and get Itachi's little brother's eyes as he is the only one left. My former root master, Danzo, came to see me today with an intriguing offer. He and the other two council advisors were the ones who ordered Itachi to kill his clan, but poor Serutobi sensei wouldn't have the heart to do it. Like Kabuto, he had asked his other root agents to gather the Sharingan eyes from the dead bodies of the Uchiha clan members. However, he was unaware that Kabuto also worked for me, so he was ordered to remove the eyes surgically so that they wouldn't be harmed, and he gave me three pairs of Uchiha eyes. In exchange for my attacking Konoha during the Chunin exam's final, Danzo has instructed me to use the first Hokage cells to make a prosthetic arm for him and implant ten of his Sharingan eyes. The arm will be easy for him to use and will not have any problems because of the first cell's inherent healing ability. Therefore, Itachi was given the order to do so by Danzo and the two former advisors. If Sandame Gigi had been involved in the decision to kill the clan, I would not have known what to do. Thank God. Other than the fact that they and the civilian council caused my childhood to be a nightmare, I don't know much about these three. For whatever reason, perhaps out of love for his younger brother, Itachi chose to keep Sasuke alive and chose not to tell him the truth. In order for Sasuke to murder him, he has now framed himself as the villain. Has he even given any thought to what might occur if he were to discover the whole truth about the cause of the Uchiha massacre? The invasion was semi-successful, I wasn't able to lay much waste to Konoha because of that damned Kayubi brat stopping the Jinchuriki of one tail alone. But I was able to kill off Serutobi. Sensei and Mark Sasuke.kun with the curse mark. Now that he would see Uzumaki Naruto's progress, the seal would start to affect his thinking and corrupt him slowly. Eventually, he will fall into the dark side and join me. Well, so the seal contributed to his tendency to go power crazy most of the time. The seal would contain Orochimaru's soul, which would be filled with thoughts of power and retaliation. Nonetheless, I found his words and actions to be quite authentic. Reflecting on his battle with Sasuke in the Valley of the End, Naruto muses, I don't know what to believe in. That is it, the diary is finished. Let us see, after this, the next three years would have probably been spent on his training and then in the next six months of it, he would be ready to take over his body. I would say that probably about three to four months are left for it but I don't think Sasuke would sit and watch it, not until he gets his revenge, Naruto thinks to himself. Sensing the Hiraishin Kanai he had previously placed outside the base, he teleports to it in a yellow flash after checking the hidden room for anything else he should bring. He also makes sure the vial containing the Sharingan eyes and the tube containing first Hokage's blood are sealed in his black cloak. Then he dashes toward the edge of the land of fire. He had run all day and rested a little to eat or sleep at night when he arrived at fire country's boundaries. He had been leaning against a tree, getting ready for lunch, when he heard a twig snap. His right hand had already reached the handle of his katana, which was strapped to his waist and concealed inside his cloak, as he hastily stood up. Itachi, who was approaching from the opposite side of the forest, didn't ask him to wait for very long. Naruto, who doesn't think he could defeat Itachi if he was sincere, asks him, so, the Akatsuki has decided to finally capture me, huh? Although, I don't see Kisame with you, do you believe you could capture me alone? Itachi tells him, I could, probably, but that is not what I am here for Naruto.kun before using his Mangeku Sharingan to subdue him in a Sukuyomi. Inside the world of Sukuyomi, although Naruto isn't hanging or stretched across a cross or post this time, he does make an appearance in the familiar location. He notices Itachi standing across from him, a few feet away. I am just here to talk for a while with you and Zetsu could probably spy on us so I had to use this on you, Naruto is told. So that Alo. Vera plant thingy guy's name is Zetsu, Weird but anyways, it is good that you found me here. Wait a minute, how did you know I was here? Naruto inquires. After our last meeting, I had a crow summon of mine follow you from a distance so that the next time you were out of the village I could talk to you. Naruto tells him, wearing an expression of indifference, well, I found something interesting a while ago and it has to do with the truth about the Uchiha massacre. There was nothing to be found about it, Naruto.kun. It is all in the public you can ask anyone in Konoha about it and I am sure they would tell you what happened, he informs him. Yeah, but the villagers in Konoha are fools. They treated me like the Kayubi and they don't know the real mission that was given to you by the village elders, now do they? He has somehow managed to obtain the details of the mission I was assigned. Itachi ponders and lets out a long sigh, there's no use in keeping it from him now. It is true, whatever you have read from somewhere, but tell me, 
How did you get hold of this information? Danzo and the two elders wouldn't have risked anyone finding the real truth behind it, Itachi responds, eager to learn more. I just raided Orochimaru's main base in Otoe Day or some time ago where he had a diary of sorts. He had a spy in Konoha that told somehow knew about this mission of yours. That's not possible. Other than the three elders, third Hokage and me, no one else is supposed to know about this, especially not Orochimaru. That spy, Kabuto, it seems like he was a root agent working for Danzo while at the same time providing information to Orochimaru, Naruto informs him. He also understands the matter. Kabuto is a medical ninja so he was one of the few ordered by Danzo to harvest the Sharingan eyes from the dead people of your clan. Itachi had never heard of this before. He was aware of what Danzo had done to Uchiha Shisui, but he felt that it was excessive to remove the eyes of his deceased clan shinobis. However, he was powerless to stop him until he arrived in the village he really had to pass away. That's not all. Orochimaru confirmed the credibility of the information from Danzo himself when he came to Orochimaru to implant 10 Sharingan eyes in his right hand which, is made of the first Hokage's cells. To be honest, I don't have any clue of what Danzo plans to do with 10 eyes on his hand, Naruto says as he tries to determine why. Itachi was fully aware of his motivation. There is a forbidden technique among the Uchiha clan that is called Izanagi. With a normal Genjutsu, a user will apply an illusion to a target's senses, causing the target to experience things that are not real. With Izanagi, the user applies an illusion to reality itself, giving the user control over what is and is not real for as long as Izanagi is active. Naruto asks him, and how does it help him? Like why get 10 of the Sharingan eye? He was aware of the prohibited technique's potential, but he was unaware of Danzo's motivation. With those 10 eyes what he can do is rewrite reality 10 times over. If you manage to kill him somehow, at the cost of permanent blindness of one of those eyes, he can make his death seem like an illusion and he can keep doing it repeatedly for 10 of those eyes, Itachi tells him. So he kind of activated a cheat code and that gives him 10 extra lives in a fight, it would be annoying to keep on killing him but not see him die. Or I could just apply a complex and effective chakra stopper seal on him that would stop the entire chakra flow in his body, making everything useless, Naruto says while appearing to be conversing with him. That is impressive. Danzo wouldn't be much of a problem for you but then you are a seal master, so something like that should be expected from you. Do you think anyone else other than you would be able to do it? Idachi asks about it. That's the problem. These types of seals require a lot of chakra to work and Uzumakis are known for having large chakra reserves. I have a biju in me, making it a lot easier for me to do it. Not so much for the regular shinobis, Naruto says with a disappointed expression. Naruto opens the green vial containing the eyes and hands it to Itachi, saying, an additional thing is that when Kabuto was ordered by Danzo to gather the Sharingan eyes, he gave Orochimaru three pairs of those eyes, two pairs of which he wasted on test subjects, and the last one are your mother's eyes. Itachi grabs it because he finds it hard to comprehend that his mother was not left alone either. He felt nauseous at the idea of his mother's body lying in the ground without her eyes. After staring at them for a minute, he handed it back to Naruto. Keep them with you Naruto.kun. Naruto begins by stuttering, what, no, the. These are your mother's eyes. You have to keep it with you, what am I supposed to do with them? Naruto nods, recalling his previous statement, I believe Sasuke will fight me in the next three months or so and then they might get in the wrong hands. You do know that they are no ordinary Sharingan eyes? With a slight smile on his face the entire time, Itachi tells him, I think you would know what to do with them, Naruto.kun. You would keep my mother's eyes safe with you and, if you decide to transplant and use them then do know that neither I nor my mother would have a problem with it. Determined not to go in that direction, Naruto asks him, I can't just do that. Then what difference would be left between me and Danzo? Itachi tells him, the difference would be that you would use it with good intentions and not harm anyone while Danzo would be using it for himself, while Naruto merely gazes into his eyes. But, it is your mother's eyes, that has to be a reason to not do it, Naruto replies. Naruto.kun, my mother always wanted to adopt you when your parents died but the council never allowed it, thinking of it as a shifting of powers between the clans. Most of them saw you as a thing of power, even my father did. But my mother genuinely wanted to adopt and raise you. If she would want anyone to use her eyes and protect others, she would always trust her best friend's son, Itachi tells him, as Naruto was feeling sad, considering having a family. Itachi laughs as Naruto chuckles at the thought of Sasuke's reaction. So don't worry about it Naruto.kun, whatever you decide to do with it, both I and my mother believe in you and wouldn't be mad with your decision. On the other hand, Sasuke might cry and scream about it, so you have that, Itachi says. 
then he replaces the vial in the storage seal of his cloak. But that is not why I am here for, I wanted to know what you think about Sasuke. He says, nothing much, I stopped caring about him when he tried to kill me twice in our last fight. I have stopped thinking about him, not realizing what he's really saying. I saw some other emotion on your face when I suddenly mentioned his name to you, Itachi tells him, causing Naruto's eyes to widen slightly. You can tell that to the whole of Konoha and fool them easily Naruto.kun but not me. He looks at the ground, attempting to make sense of it. I, I don't really know what to think of him. I was on the edge with everyone treating me like a loser, including him and I made him seem selfish. But in our fight, I was knocked out unconscious by him and he could have killed me to get the Mangeku Sharingan but he didn't do it, Naruto responds. Itachi smiles at that, knowing that Naruto hadn't written him off as bad, in Orochimaru's base. I found out that the curse mark he put on Sasuke makes his thoughts darker than usual, like telling him things and feeding on the need of his power to kill you when the seal is activated. But he didn't kill me, maybe, deep down I think he could be saved from the path he has taken. Several crows fly out of his Akatsuki cloak as he lifts the left side. As Naruto chokes on it, one of them enters his mouth and travels down his throat. He breathes a little to straighten his posture after coughing for a few seconds. When Naruto says, what was that for? You just shoved a crow in me just like that. It's just a precaution for later if things go wrong and Sasuke somehow ends up trying to destroy Konoha. I would be fighting him in a few months Naruto.kun and I want you to promise me something. I wouldn't be alive after the fight, Itachi replies. Do you really have to die? I have connected with you so much in just a couple of conversations. You are like the older brother I never had, Naruto tells him, feeling a little sad about the whole thing. With a sorrowful grin, Itachi calls him forward with his right hand. Itachi uses his middle and index fingers to poke him in the forehead when he is a foot away, causing Naruto to rub it a little. There is no other option for me Naruto.kun. I will die by his hands to pay for my crimes while he would redeem himself and the Uchiha clan and be welcomed as a hero for killing a traitor, Itachi tells him. But how? Why did you do it? The killing of your clan members could have never been easy and especially ending your parents' lives, says Naruto. I have seen war Naruto.kun and let me tell you, it is not something one wishes to see. If the Uchiha clan started their coup against the Hokage and the village, many innocent lives would be lost with the possibility of other nations planning to attack the village. I didn't want my clan to be the reason for the fourth ninja war. But why would your clan go against the Hokage and the village they are supposed to protect? It has been Danzo since the beginning Naruto.kun, his agents spread the word that the Kayubi was controlled by Uchiha during the attack. Then he relocated the entire clan to the corner of the village while the Hokage was busy overlooking the rebuilding of the village and trying to protect you from some shinobis and civilians which was also the result of Danzo spreading the news of you being a Jinshuriki with the help of other council members. This old piece of shit had to die, Naruto had decided. All of the things he had done to him and the Uchiha clan out of avarice for power. An absolute cunt of a person, this power. Hungry whore is the son of a bitch. All Naruto wanted to do was seize his face smash it against a wall, and continue to do so while screaming and pleading for mercy, no time given. The entire population of Konoha detested the clan, which was one of the clans that constructed the village. Seeing their current predicament, they decided to stage a coup d'etat and seize the Hokage's seat for themselves. I became a double spy and informed the Hokage of their scheme, accompanied by my close friend Shisui Uchiha. After the third Hokage failed to engage the father and clan elders, Shisui informed them of the unique power of his Mangeku Sharingan, the Koto Amatsukami. It is considered a Genjutsu of the highest caliber because the victim is completely unaware that they are being manipulated. He was going to use it on the clan elders and change their ideas on the attack, which would stop the entire coup d'etat, but Naruto guessed the next thing. The technique allows the user to enter the mind of any individual within their field of view and manipulate them by giving them false experiences, making it seem as though they were doing things of their own free will. Let me guess, seeing as the clan is dead, Danzo surely had a hand in stopping Shisui from doing so, he responded. Yes, Danzo attacked Shisui with his root ninjas one afternoon and ripped out his right eye to use for himself. I was ordered by him and the other two elders to kill the entire clan but I asked the Hokage to ensure Sasuke's safety. Naruto's right hand was clenched tightly as he wanted to simply reach Konoha and rip him to pieces. One thing more, I said it the last time I met you. Did you have some help because killing so many people alone seems a bit difficult? Naruto inquires. You guessed it right, I had help from someone who calls himself, Uchiha Madara, he came to offer and help me kill the clan while in return I would join his group, the Akatsuki. 
He is the real leader of the group while Pain, who has the Rinnegan, acts as the leader, Itachi tells him. Itachi chuckles lightly at Naruto's frustration and the way he expressed it. It must be the same fake Madara who unlocked the Kayubi from my mother, destroyed so much of the village, and killed my parents, Naruto says, tilting his head slightly to the left. You know, if there is a room upon which it is written, ruin everyone's life, one would probably find both the fake Madara and Danzo fucking with each other because they love to fuck with each other's lives. In the end, I killed the clan with his help and told him to stay away from Konoha and Sasuke as well. Now that Sasuke would kill me, I believe they would try and directly attack the village to get the Kayubi from you. From Sasuke's hatred and subsequent murder of him to him and his decision to remain in the Akatsuki to defend the village and himself, Naruto reflects, he had it all planned out from the beginning. If something goes wrong and Sasuke doesn't plan on protecting Konoha, then promise me that you would try to show him the light and give him a chance or two. If he still doesn't agree, then stop him from continuing on his path, Itachi tells him. Naruto remains quiet for a few seconds. You don't have to worry about it Itachi. You have sacrificed so much for the village and Sasuke, I will make sure to help him and bring him on the right path. I will also carry your will and protect the village. Itachi is beaming when he says that. I leave the village, and if Sasuke goes down the wrong path, both are in your hands. If only mother could have adopted you, Naruto.kun. Perhaps things would have been a little different. Perhaps you could have changed my father's perspective about the village and prevented anything from happening. Thank you for making me feel so much lighter. Additionally, Naruto.kun, keep the truth about the Uchiha massacre to yourself. Otherwise, the Uchiha clan's reputation and name would be severely damaged. Given that he would likely not see him again, Naruto tells him, I don't understand why you would want this. You became the villain while protecting the village and Sasuke. But I will respect your wishes and do as you say so, as he breaks down in tears. Itachi was pleased to be able to communicate and connect with him on such a deep level, he wished his mother could have spoken to him as well, she would have adored him like her own son right away, regardless of whether he was the boisterous 13. Year. Old Naruto or this one. After saying, thank you Naruto.kun, and good luck with your future, Itachi gives him a final forehead tap. In the actual world Naruto exited the Genjutsu and attempted to get to his feet with the assistance of a nearby tree. There were no indications of Itachi in the forest, as he looked around. When something hit his leg, he began to move in Konoha's direction. He recognized Itachi's headband right away when he looked down and noticed a Konoha headband with a scratch along the leaf symbol. He picked it up and held it tightly as he considered all that he had given up for his brother and the village. He would start by venting his absurd thoughts on the villagers and some of his classmates, such as Sakura, in an attempt to be at least somewhat like him. After leaving the hidden sound village, he forgot to wear his headband, so he ties it on his forehead and seals it away. For Itachi, he would also attempt to assist Sasuke. Naruto would do it for Itachi if he would be content knowing that the village would be safe and that Sasuke would be there to protect it. Itachi deserved some peace and happiness in the afterlife after all of the suffering and suffering. Itachi mentioned that Pain, the Akatsuki's apparent leader, had Rinnegan. Is there some sort of jutsu involved? Naruto muses about it and laments not approaching Itachi directly. It's not just any jutsu or anything, it's a dojutsu. The Kayubi informs him that because the Sage of Six Paths shared eyes, it is the best of the three dojutsu in the world. However, aren't the majority of the items on the Sage of Six Paths myths? Unaware of the man's true nature, Naruto asks, is there a god? Ninjin is not a myth. Although all of his stories may be fabricated or false, the man is real and existed on this earth long before you did. You're acting like you know him personally, that you've met him, or something. There seems to be more here, don't you think? He raises his eyebrows twice as he speaks, he received no answer in return. Naruto had successfully investigated Orochimaru's base, but it had taken him a day to run to Konoha. Except for a few crucial vials in a sort of hidden room within his lab, he didn't find much in the base. Apart from that, he wished he could somehow get rid of the numerous experiments and human test subjects that were there. Those unsettling pictures would now come to mind every time he heard Orochimaru's name. Fortunately, though, he had been able to learn a little bit about Orochimaru and his work. He currently possessed two extremely important items from two distinct Konoha clans. Two clans, rather extinct. The advantages of using both things were too great for him to ignore. The Kayubi assured him that if he injected Hashirama's blood, his cells would merge with those of the first Hokage, providing him with many benefits beyond Mokutan Kekai. Genke. He had a pair of Sharingan eyes, which was the other thing. 
Itachi had stated that he wouldn't be upset if he had to have those eyes transplanted and had trusted him to use it responsibly. However, those two issues could wait until later. Danzo was the only person, or rather, the only thing, on his mind at the moment. He was a true annoyance to him, and perhaps to Konoha as a whole. What really bothered Naruto was the way he made sure the village was always in the lead. If Danzo so desired, he could request that his root agents kill a leaf shinobi. Although he didn't do it himself, he had caused him a great deal of suffering as a child by tricking the villagers into believing he was the Kayubi in human form. Do not misunderstand. Naruto did not despise the villagers and some of the ninjas who mistreated him. No, he simply no longer cared for them. He used to constantly pull practical jokes to get their attention, but these days he just couldn't care less. His life was full of activities. He was a village Jonin, and he would defend Konoha so that his parents' sacrifice would not be in vain. He was young and impressionable when he declared that he wanted to be Hokage after witnessing the Sandame being revered by the entire village. Nevertheless, he still admired him for being kind to him when few others did. He would defend the village and suppress any hatred he might have because he had to change himself before he could follow Jiraiya's teachings and attempt to bring about world peace in the shinobi world, which is rife with suffering and hatred. Itachi assumed responsibility for killing his clan in order to keep the village peaceful. He prevented a war because, if the Uchiha clan followed their plan for a coup d'etat, Iwa Kumo would undoubtedly exploit the situation in Konoha. From their few encounters, Itachi had taught him a lot, and he didn't want all of Itachi's hardships to be in vain. He would pass away in a few months, and Naruto had vowed to protect the village in his place. When he reached the village gates, he hurried to the Hokage's office to inform her about the diary and documents he had discovered in his base. He simply approached her door and knocked because he didn't want to teleport into her office and interrupt her if she was in a meeting. As he entered, he noticed Jiraiya and Tsunade conversing about something he didn't understand. He said, keeping his head down and bending his knee. Mission accomplished Hokage. Sama. Yeah, don't do that. It feels a lot weird seeing you do such stuff, just report normally, Tsunade told him. Naruto stood up, opened a diary and a few pages, and placed them on her table. He placed a ceiling barrier around the room so that no one could enter or hear what they were saying because he was aware of what was in those items and the potential that they were discussing a village top secret. Jiraiya picked up a page from the collection and began reading them, asking, what is this? As both Sanins were absorbed in going through various documents, some of which were extremely detailed and repulsive, he told them, these are the things that I was able to collect from Orochimaru's hideout that she ordered me to investigate. Some of these pages contain information about different human experiments and other weird shit he has done in his time. The diary is pretty informative, I will tell you that. It is a kind of journal where he keeps his record or just writes in general about his crucial test subjects. By judging the look on your faces I can tell that you don't find any of it pleasant. That's good because if you didn't do that then I would be very worried about the mental state of your brains, he says with a serious gaze. Anyways, as I was saying, the journal of his told me about a wood style user in our ranks, someone named Tenzo. As Naruto tries to remember his face, Tsunade tells him, Hmm, yes we have one, you saw him roughly a week ago when I gave you the mission. He went with Kakashi and Sakura along with Sai on the mission to talk with Sasori's spy. They returned a day before yesterday. Sarutobi. Sensei found him working under Danzo and told him that the village was looking for wood. Style user after Hashirama. Sama. So he took him from Danzo and transported him into Tanbu units who work under the Hokage, Jiraiya expands on this. At that, Naruto sighs wearily. So Orochimaru's experiment with the Shodai Hokage's blood did result in 59 orphan kids dying from the stress of his blood cells. Only one of them survived who was put through Danzo root training, Naruto said, unsure whether or not to break the news of Hashirama's blood he had discovered in a tube there. As she goes through the records, putting herself in the doctor's shoes, and analyzing the assessment made by the rogue Sani, Tsunade remarks, Grandfather's body had lots of secrets, which is probably why Orochimaru defiled his grave to study it. From what I can understand through the reports of his experiments that you have brought with you, Orochimaru thought that injecting Grandfather's blood in adolescence would adjust far better in propagating his cells, but it was just the opposite. A child does not have the strength or stamina to endure the process, which results in their death. Naruto says without considering his current location, okay, that is one way to explain things. Kayubi just told me that I would survive the procedure pretty easily and would not die from it, he didn't give me a detailed explanation of why these children died. What a dumb brat. Have fun responding to their inquiries, you weren't supposed to bring me up in public. Jiraiya asks him, somewhat alarmed by his statement, wait what? 
Kayubi speaks to you. When did that start to happen and why wasn't I told about it? Naruto laughs uneasily and rubs the back of his head. I said it out loud, didn't I? Oops. He breathes deeply. When I was 13 I talked to him a bit and he gave me his emotion. Sensing ability in return to see, hear, and feel what I did. Ever since then, he has just been neutral towards me. I believe he doesn't hate me. At least that is what I feel like. You haven't recently given me any reason to be angry with you, and I've accepted that I can't persuade you to let me out of the seal. He warns him, I'll be waiting for my chance to kill you if you do something foolish like you did early in life. Come on, you had to ruin it at the end, even though I was feeling really good about whatever you were saying. You really need to learn how to carry on a conversation without giving a warning at the end of a sentence, Naruto says. Since then we have had this kind of telepathic communication thing if that is the correct word for it. It's just whenever he feels like it, he tells me what he knows or thinks, so he told me that because I have had a tailed beast sealed inside of me since birth, I wouldn't die if the Shodai Hokage's blood was introduced to me. Naruto tells them both. Jiraiya was concerned that the seal might be weak, but she didn't interfere if Naruto had been conversing with the Kayubi for more than three years. She asks him about it, so, you found grandfather's blood in his hideout, seeing as it was the main one, wasn't it? As he opens the corked tube containing Hashirama's blood, he tells her, oh, of course, the Kayubi wouldn't give me a lecture about why I would survive the process if I didn't have any, now would he? This is possibly the last test tube filled with his blood, I mean it is just an assumption because I have no proof of it. Tsunade takes the container away from him so she can examine it up close. Curious as to why the Kayubi would say that, she asked him, what did the Kayubi tell you? What is the reason that you would survive the procedure where only one survived? Hmm, he told me that the Shodai's chakra was very potent and strong, enough to stop a biju with his Mokotan Kekai, Jenke. So when his blood is introduced into someone, his blood cells attack the said experiment's blood cells, overpowering them and as a result resulting in the person's death. Since I had the Kayubi sealed inside me when I was born, his chakra is constantly added to my chakra pool. That is the reason why I am not able to do Iryo, Ninjutsu and Genjutsu properly because of his destructive nature chakra. Both of you following me still? He stops his explanation in between to let them process what he said. He continues after receiving a nod from them. Now, when the show dies blood and as a result, his cells are introduced into my body, they would try and fight the Kayubi's chakra present throughout my body. In the end, they would succeed and suppress the malicious chakra, allowing my body to start adjusting his blood cells along with mine and mixing his DNA with mine, resulting in me being able to use Mokotan, Naruto says as he recalls what he was told. After considering the potential benefits and drawbacks, Tsunade gives him the tube after a minute. Very well, go on and inject his blood in your body, she replies. Both Jiraiya and Naruto were taken aback, though Jiraiya was less so than Naruto because he also approved of the choice. WH. What? You can't just do that and give me his blood bomb. Chan. Think about it, it is your grandfather's blood that will run through me, he yells. The only reason I didn't want to do it in the first place was that I was thinking of how upset you would be on learning about it. It is just his blood, Naruto. What would I even do with it, use it as decoration in my office, do you know how lame that is? Now if you told me that you sold my grandfather's necklace, then I would have been angry and upset with you, but his blood isn't that personal to me. If you brought his armor, one of his stolen scrolls maybe, or something like that then I would have kept it. And secondly, I don't mind it and Konoha would get another wood. Style user in its ranks. I find you the best suitable option for injecting his blood, the fact that you didn't give in to the temptation and do it without informing me is enough for me. Tsunade continues, as he reads through what she said, Naruto simply looks at the vial of blood. Jiraiya considered pushing it one last time. Naruto takes a deep breath and decides that since he would not encounter any issues if he did it and he was given the Hokage and Sanin's approval, he would proceed with it. It would help you as well Naruto, learning Mokuden Jutsus would help you in the future against the Akatsuki. I know you defeated one of their members on your last mission but they still have many capable shinobi. You need an element of surprise against them and what better than this. But what would I tell to those who see me doing Mokuten Jutsus? Wouldn't they question my sudden ability to do jutsu similar to the Shodai Hokage? Naruto responded. Tsunade waved her hand slightly. Just tell them that since the Uzumaki clan and Senju clan were closely related you were able to awaken the Mokotan Kekai. Jenke. Some smart people like Shikamaru and others wouldn't question the credibility of it because you told them during your spar with Kakashi when you returned that you were related to all the Hokages, which includes my grandfather. 
He opens the page where Orochimaru wrote about what he had learned about the Uchiha massacre and says, Okay, I will do it but in a few days. There is another important thing that I read in his journal. When Jiraiya and Tsunade learned the truth about Itachi's behavior, they were both taken aback. Everyone had previously thought he was a traitor, but this changed that. She expresses her concern, asking, Why is there no official record of this? I have been the Hokage for years and I am coming to know about this now. The Kayubi interrupted Naruto as he was about to tell them both what Itachi had said to him. Don't discuss your talk with Itachi with them. Even though he told you not to tell anyone, you did. Now, somehow, keep this entire information between the three of you without bringing him up. After giving it some thought, Naruto chooses to keep his talk with Itachi private. He trusted you with the full story from his side, otherwise, you would have only learned what the snake Sani knew of the situation. From what I can guess by reading his journal, Orochimaru had some doubt behind Itachi's action and then he confirmed it from Danzo about the Uchiha clan's decision on a coup d'etat. Only Sandame, his two advisors, and Danzo knew about the mission, with the latter three ordering Itachi to kill his clan. Then with the third Hokage dead and Itachi outside the village, they tried to clear their names and hide anything related to the real mission, he informs them. After reading it, anyone could have arrived at that conclusion. Totally perplexed as to why someone would choose to keep the village over his family, Jiraiya questioned, but why would he accept the mission? How could he accept it knowing that he would have to kill his clan and parents? He did not want Sasuke and the younger generation to be dragged into another conflict if his clan was successful in launching a coup because he had witnessed war. Naruto recalls his talk with him and reflects, he was not a typical Uchiha who thought of the clan being superior to the village. I don't have a clue. I don't think anyone knows why including Sandame, Gigi and Danzo, except Itachi who did it. And I don't think we will ever know about it, he informs them. As she continued reading the diary, Tsunade, who had been reading the remainder of it, gasped a little. She smashed her table, ready to kill him now. Damn him, he was working with Orochimaru during the invasion of Konoha. In exchange, he asked Orochimaru to make him a prosthetic arm from my grandfather's cells that is filled with ten Sharingan eyes. How dare he do this? I will kill him for this. She yelled. To calm her down a little, Jiraiya placed a hand on her shoulder. Calm down Tsunade, he will get what is in store for him but we need to plan accordingly, you can't just go out with the intention to kill him. He would be in one of his root bases right now, filled with shinobis working for him. We need to wait for the right moment to strike. Naruto says, I think we should capture him the next time he comes out in public and allow someone else to kill him later, after formulating a strategy. What are you thinking Naruto? Why shouldn't we kill him for using my grandfather's blood like that? I told you it depends on the person that has his blood or cells inside of them. I trust you with my life and I know that you would use it for good but I do not trust Danzo, she says, her voice rising in protest. You don't know how much I want to slam his head until his brain pops out. By violently removing Shisui's right eye, he prevented Shisui from halting the Uchiha clan's attempt to seize power and made my life miserable. Apart from Sasuke, I didn't know many Uchiha, but based on what Itachi told me, I might have connected with Makoto Uchiha. Danzo is the reason why one of the founding clans of Konoha died, leaving Itachi by himself among the Akatsuki to defend the village and me in the hopes that his brother will murder him and bring a hero back to the community. Look, you have the right to be angry about it but think for a while. Orochimaru knows about the truth of the Uchiha massacre. If Sasuke comes to learn about this, then he will see Konoha as his enemy and want revenge against us. But if we give him the one behind all of this, the one who has Sharingan eyes on his right arm then maybe he would come back to the village he tells them but conceals certain details from their eyes. Do you believe that Orochimaru wouldn't take over his body till then? And the other question is that would he be satisfied by killing Danzo? Jiraiya inquires. Oh, I know he wouldn't allow Orochimaru to take over his body. His only goal in life is revenge and he would have it. He kills Itachi and then comes back to the village or maybe he somehow learns about Itachi's real mission and turns against us. In that case, Danzo would be the sacrifice. So ba. Chan. Danzo dies in the end and you can control yourself and your intent to kill him. But Sasuke is a Uchiha who are generally dicks and lose the sense to think in their hatred. Tsunade pondered the matter for a moment and to prioritize her needs over those of the village. Fine brat, tomorrow there is a council meeting taking place and he should be there. That is good, we will capture him then and keep him in a prison but it will have to be heavily guarded. His root ninjas would try to break him free, Jiraiya says. Don't worry about it. Just call him in your office to talk with him. I will place the stasis storage scroll that I learned recently after placing a chakra sealing fuinjutsu on him, completely cutting him off from his chakra, 
Naruto informs them. Tsunade looks at Jiraiya as though to inquire if such a seal was present and if it would be effective. She receives a nod in response to her unasked question. You have given it a lot of thought Naruto and prepared for it, she says to him. Well, I had nothing much to do but think about it on my way back to Konoha. Also, capturing him in a prison is a bit risky since one opportune moment and he might be gone whereas in the stasis scroll, he would be in a scroll that I would carry around. He tells her. Also, don't tell anyone about whatever you learned about the Uchiha clan massacre. No one should know about this whether they be civilian or shinobi as it would ruin the image of the clan that the villagers have, making it difficult for Sasuke to return. I agree with him Haim, Serutobi. Sensei didn't tell anyone for a reason, he would have told you or left something for the next Hokage but Danzo probably had it removed somehow. Let's just keep it under wraps and to us only, he tells her. Very well, that is what we will do. Everything discussed in this room right now is not to be repeated outside. Well done on the mission Naruto, you have brought us a lot of information about Orochimaru's work and Danzo's deed. Naruto raised his head in a respectful voice. Since there won't be much private conversation between them, he stands up straight and removes the room's ceiling barrier before asking, So Jiraiya. Sensei, what have you been up to? Naruto nods and recalls the mission his former team completed last week just following trails about the Akatsuki and sometimes on Orochimaru here and there. I have a lead that may give me some information about the leader of the Akatsuki group or where their main hideout is. Aba, uh, Chan, could you tell me what happened in the mission Kakashi? Sensei and Sakura went to talk with Sasori's spy? That spy was none other than Kabuto who was working for Orochimaru. They had a fight with Orochimaru and Kabuto as Kakashi and Yamato, whose real name is Tenzo, took on Orochimaru while Sakura and Sai took on Kabuto. They were able to force him into a corner and retreat with Orochimaru, she told him while Jiraiya stayed behind to listen to what was going on. Hmm. Well Sakura does have good Iria. Ninjutsu skills and your strength. I saw that much on the mission I went with her. If only she didn't do a bit of this for her stupid crush then she could have easily reached your level or surpassed you, he says while sighing. She is good at being a medic ninja Naruto and as long as her affection towards Sasuke doesn't affect the mission it is fine with me even if she doesn't reach my level, Naruto says with a shrug. Anyways, you just returned an hour or so from an S rank mission, go and rest yourself. Tell me whenever you have decided to inject grandfather's blood into your body so I can keep a check if something goes wrong. He disappears in a yellow flash and returns to his compound to rest on a bed after a while. I will do it tomorrow after I have sealed Danzo in a scroll. The Kyubi told me that it should take him some time to help adjust my body to the Shodai's blood cells and DNA in my body. In the evening after waking up 30 minutes ago, Naruto made the decision to spend the evening eating ramen. Since his return, he had not paid the Ichirikas' father. Daughter pair a visit. As a result, he was grinning and partially waving to the villagers as he made his way down the road to the store. Being angry with them for the rest of his life over the past didn't help him. He opened the shop's flap and stepped inside to take a seat on a stool. Hello, Tucci. Ojasan. It has been a while. The elderly man turns to face a young man with blonde hair and red tips who is most likely between the ages of 16 and 17. But when he looked at his face more closely, the blue eyes and whisker lines reminded him of a blonde child who used to eat here. As he was about to respond, he was told, Ayame. Come out and look who it is. He heard footsteps and then saw Ayame emerge from the kitchen, staring at him. Oh, Naruto. It's you. You have grown so much. Where have you been all this while? There is silence for a few seconds before he is abruptly embraced tightly by her. She yells, Naruto. You are back. Look at you. You have completely changed, as Naruto gives her a hug in return. It is good to see you as well, Ayame.ne. Chan, I thought I needed to improve on everything a bit and thus the change. Well, it certainly wasn't a bad decision. Where have you been all this while? He orders two regular chicken ramens to eat after telling her, nothing, just doing missions here and there, some of which take weeks to complete. As he waited for his order and contemplated what would happen tomorrow, he felt a pair of arms encircle his neck and give him a tight hug from behind. He cocked his head slightly to look at the person. She lets him go and sits next to him as her team follows her inside the store. Good. Evening Kuranai.ne. Chan. You seem to be a lot happier than usual, he says. Kiba tells him. Why wouldn't she be? She has a boyfriend now in Asuma. Sensei for a week, and he throws a fist on his head in response. Keep it quiet Kiba. I want it to be a secret between us but somehow you saw us both together. I don't want you telling it to everyone in the village. 
He tells her, it's fine Karanai ne, Chan, he has just told me till now, hopefully. Well anyway, congrats on this news, before making a clone who salutes him and walks away. Shino asks him, where did you send your clone Naruto.san? He sees Hinata just blushing and turns to face him as she looks away nervously, he is gone to fetch for Asuma. Sensei and warn him not to break her heart and cause her any sorts of pain otherwise he would lose the thing that differentiates him from a female. And please call me Naruto, Shino. Why don't you sit with me Hinata, Kiba, and Shino, and eat ramen with me? He asks. She kisses Naruto on the cheek and walks away, when Naruto gives a small smile. We can't do that Naruto, we have to report to the Hokage about our mission right now, maybe sometime later. Come on team 8, let's go, she says. He left the store to go home after eating the ramen he had ordered and giving them far more than the order cost in appreciation for everything they had done for him. It was then that he saw Kakashi reading the book he always read. Yo Kakashi. Sensei, I wanted to ask you about something. He is asked, hmm, what is it, by Kakashi. Well, I saw your Sharingan on the last mission we went together, and you never told us how you got it in the first place, Naruto remarks, observing a glimmer of regret and sadness in his eyes. Kakashi briefly touches the Sharingan eye with his left hand. It was during the Third Great Ninja War. Our team was given the mission to destroy the Kanabi Bridge to turn the tide of war in our favor. I went on the mission along with my two teammates, Uchiha Obito and Nohara Rin. Naruto asks, wasn't who dot san your team's sensei? Why wasn't he with you? Sensei had another mission to do, stop the 1000 Iwa Shinobis on the battlefront. I was a recently promoted Jonin and we had a shortage in manpower during the war. During the mission, Rin got captured by Iwa Shinobis and Obito wanted to rescue her but I always followed rules at that time, so for me, the mission came first, Kakashi informs him. But it was you who told us that, those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Then why did you give preference to the mission first? Naruto asks. Chuckles. It wasn't me who came up with that saying, it was Obito who said it. My father was scorned by the village and his comrades because he saved his fellow leaf shinobis on a mission at the expense of the mission failing. In the end, he committed suicide. That resulted in me following all the shinobi rules. I am sorry, but I will tell you this, your father was a hero for what he did. To choose between saving my comrades or executing a mission, I would have done the same as him. Naruto informs him. When he says that, Kakashi smiles. Obito went on to try and save Rin while I decided to continue the mission but later I changed my mind listening to his speech and helping him to rescue Rin. But an Iwa shinobi tried to kill us by crushing the rocks of a cave on us. I fell and was going to be killed when Obito threw me away and the rock hit him instead, he says quietly to Naruto. After that, he gave me his left Sharingan eye as a gift for being a Jonin when earlier I had lost an eye from the slash of a kanai. He told Rin to transplant his eye while he was near death. I, I never knew you had to go through so much in your childhood sensei, I am sorry for asking you about your Sharingan. Kakashi waves his hand and departs, saying, it's okay, Naruto. Every story has a lesson that helps one grow. I learned an important life lesson that day. Naruto made the decision to go home and spend the day sleeping. The following morning the next morning, Naruto woke up by 8 and took a bath to feel rejuvenated. With his black cloak sealed and ready for use on a mission, he wore his black t-shirt and light blue pants, strapped his katana by his waist on his backside, and finished the ensemble with black boots and white ninja tape on the ankles. He ate his breakfast quickly and made his way to the Hokage Tower. He teleported to the Hiraishan seal he had placed inside her office because he knew Danzo would be there by now. When he looked around and saw Danzo inside, he performed a quick shunshin and sealed him to keep him from using his chakra at all. He couldn't do anything about it because he hadn't anticipated Naruto in the Hokage's office at this particular moment. He asks Naruto, what is the meaning of this? What seal have you placed on me? As Tsunade sits behind her table, her face composed. Naruto tells him, that is just a small seal on you so that you are not able to use your chakra. We know about the ten Sharingan eyes you have in your right arm, as he closes the room, making it impossible for him to flee at this point. Danzo was tense as he wondered how they might have found out. I don't know what you are talking about. What are you doing here and interrupting a meeting between the higher dot ups Kyubi container? Sighs. Just do it Naruto. He won't admit a thing and even if he did, he would say he did it for the good of the village, no matter how bad the way was, Tsunade says to him. He received a solid punch to the chin that sent him flying a little, but Naruto had no choice but to kill or maim him. Naruto opened the stasis ceiling scroll, placed it on his body, applied some chakra, 
sealed him in, and kept the scroll with him while he was on the ground. He was useless against a Jinchuriki because he couldn't even mold chakra within his body. Now what will you do with him? I would have loved to smash his face in the wall for a bit and kill him slowly but I can't do that. I will be keeping the scroll on me all the time and if a time comes when Sasuke wants revenge on Konoha, I will give him the option to kill Danzo and be done with it, Naruto tells her. She asks him, come, when are you injecting grandfather's blood? After telling her, Naruto removes the vial containing the Shodai Hokage's blood. At this moment, I have nothing to do but missions. Now that I think about it, I do have to complete the Rasengan. 2. San and Arrow. Senen both mentioned it being an incomplete jutsu, but I will do it later, Naruto says. He pulls up his t-shirt a little and inserts the needle into his upper arm after receiving an injection from Tsunade and filling it up with his blood. As he removes the needle and releases his blood into his body, he discovers that one tail of the Kayubi's chakra has covered his entire body. Concerned, Tsunade rises from her seat. As she watches the Kayubi's chakra encircle his body, his eyes turn red, and a chakra tail emerge behind his body, she yells, Naruto what's happening? Why are you shouting? I am not completely mad here, I have my senses with me at three tails worth of his chakra, he says calmly. Tsunade took a seat, feeling a little ashamed of her actions during the panic. Hello, Kayubi. Why am I currently utilizing your chakra? The nine tails are asked. You could think of my chakra and Hashiramas as opposites. My chakra tried to stop it on its own as soon as you put his blood into your body. He tells Naruto, this is what I meant earlier when I said you wouldn't die from the process of injecting Hashirama's blood. Alright, what is the estimated time of completion? I can't go around the village in this state. It would take roughly a week for his blood cells to fully subdue the chakra inside of you and combine his DNA and blood with yours. Well Bob. Chan, the Kayubi told me that the whole thing should be complete in a week or so. I am going home and would train there if I am able to otherwise I would just sit or relax. Alright but if you are having a fever or some problems then don't forget to summon Katsuyu for help or to inform me. As he leaves her office, Naruto nods and salutes her before disappearing in a yellow flash to spend the remaining time at his house. After seven days throughout the last seven days, Naruto was unable to accomplish anything worthwhile. Due to changes occurring throughout his body, he was unable to run or exercise or practice ninjutsu because these activities would cause his body to heat up. Thus, the week was devoted to reading various books. He also spent some time reading the history of Uzushiobakure, as he had never learned anything about it during his training trip. She wanted to see him, so he was currently making his way to the Hokage office. He opens the door to her office and enters, finding Shizun there too, fumbling with some documents. Yoba. Chan, you called me here? She shares with him. Yes, I wanted to give you a mission to go on, as she signed some of the documents on her desk. Shizun was a little perplexed by it but let them decide. Do you think it is wise to allow me to go on a mission at this point? He asks her. She hands the Mizuka J scroll, which he keeps in the seal on his shirt. You told me in a week you would be fine and it's just a simple mission. You have to go to Kiri and give the Mizuka J this scroll, which contains the details for a possible treaty, she says. Arrow. Senen told me about the civil war going on in and that the rebel side won during the last year of my training. You were well informed about the situation but that would be expected as you did train with a spymaster. Yes, the rebels won the war against the ones who wanted to kill all the bloodline users. So who is the new Mizukage there that we have an alliance treaty for? Mei Terumi, she was the leader of the rebels and has two keke. Genkei's, lava release and boil release. With her as the new Mizukage, Maybe we will get an alliance with Kirigakure making only Iwagakure and Kumogakure possible threats for us in the future, she tells him. She has two keke. Genkei's, damn, talk about being born privileged. Anyways, who am I to question the possibility of being born with two keke? Genkei's. When do I leave? She responds. The door behind him opened, revealing Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon just as she was about to respond to his question. They all yell, Team Ebisu reporting for duty, together. Naruto recalls how he had been just as eager to go on missions as they had been after graduation. Chuckles. You need your sensei Ebisu with you if you are to go on missions you three. Wait for him to come here, he says. Unaruto.ni. Chan, he is down with a fever and won't leave the hospital for the week. Hokage. Sama called us here for a mission. Udon informs him. Slowly turning to face Tsunade. Naruto saw her and Shizun trying to contain their laughter as he began to think about why they had been called here without their sensei. They began to laugh, and he said, low enough for only they to hear, whispers, 
Oh you have got to be shitting me, I am supposed to do babysitting on this mission. Clears her throat. Well Naruto, you are to be their temporary sensei for this mission, she announces as a chorus of, yes, is heard throughout the room. It is a simple mission to deliver the scroll but since it is so important, this is an S rank mission for you and your temporary team. Konohamaru yells, it's the best day ever, an S rank mission with Naruto.ni, Chan, too. She smirks and shakes her head when he asks, Size, I don't have any choice in this, do I? Okay, listen you three, go and prepare for a 10. Day trip or so and meet me at the village gates in half an hour. He gives them instructions and watches as they quickly depart to get ready for the mission. It would have been a simple C rank mission if not for the importance of delivering the scroll to the Mizukage, Naruto. You shouldn't have any serious threat on the mission except for a few bandits here or there. Yeah, but I could have delivered the scroll alone as well, it would have been way faster if I just ran at my top speed, he replies. Meh, you have known these kids since you were 12 and they love you as well, I know you would do anything to protect them. They haven't been genin for so long, at most 3 months or so. He says, okay, I'll accompany them on this mission, at least it's not some random kids I don't know at all, and heads out to wait for them at the village gate. He was sitting on a tree branch about 20. 5 minutes when he noticed 3 heads running toward the gate. As he ran at full speed in the excitement of the S rank mission and leaving the village with Naruto, Konohamaru exclaims, panting a little, Ha! Huh? Naruto.ni! Chan told us to get here in 30 minutes but he is still here. I think he has got Kakashi Sensei's tardiness. Naruto leapt from the tree branch behind them and gave him a light blow to the top of his head. I have been waiting here for the three of you for the past 30 minutes, and for the mission, call me Naruto. Sensei or sensei from now on, he tells the three of them. Udon observes that he is not bringing a bag for the mission like the others. As he mentions it, Moegi and Konohamaru also take note. Uh, Naruto.ni. I mean Naruto. Sensei why aren't you carrying a bag with your supplies in it like the rest of us, he asks. He reveals his black cloak and katana for them to see how it works. I am a Fuinjutsu master, only one except for Jiraiya. Sensei in Konoha. I have all my necessary items like clothes, food, water, money, etc. sealed in a storage seal that I made for myself. I have it on my shirt right now so that I can unseal it any time necessary, he says. He pulls out three standard sealing scrolls for them, fastens his katana with the hanging cord around his waist, and puts on the knee. Length black cloak. He does one for Konohamaru while the others are in awe of it. Take this and store your bags in this. It would ease your burden and help you travel faster. Place your bags after opening the scroll and apply some chakra to seal it and apply some chakra to unseal it, he says. But then sensei where are your kanais and shurikens and why are you wearing such a long cloak hiding your sword and body? Wouldn't it be easier for you to take it out and use it without the cloak? Moegi inquires. I carry my special kanais and senbons in these seals that I made and applied on my wrists. They are currently invisible but when I focus my chakra on it and depending on which wrist I did, I can unseal them. As for the cloak, it hides my body and katana completely as I have the sword behind me held near the waist. It helps in providing an element of surprise for my enemy, she asks him. All right team, we are heading in the direction of the land of waves. Believe it or not, my first mission outside the village also took me there. We will try and reach there by evening and then stop to rest for the day. Suddenly they were running toward the land of waves, to the east. Along with them, he was running at a moderate pace, pausing occasionally to rest, drink water, or have lunch in the afternoon. They arrived at the bridge that linked the land of waves and the land of fire at about 4 in the afternoon or evening. On top of it, the words, The Great Naruto Bridge, were written in large, bold letters. Konohamaru exclaims, Wow, you have a bridge named after you sensei. I did have a big hand in kind of igniting the fighting spirit of the people of wave but it was a team effort, except Sakura who did absolutely nothing. It was Kakashi. Sensei who killed an A-rank missing ninja but I had no idea that they named the bridge after me says Naruto. To be honest, he was surprised to see his name on the bridge. As they followed him, he said, come on let's go. I know someone who can give us a place to stay for the day. And began to walk in the direction of Tazuna's house. After being free of Gato and his men for almost four years, Naruto became aware of the changes that had occurred. He heard footsteps approaching and knocked on his house's door, which Tsunami opened. He says, hello, Tsunami.san. Long, time no see and waves with a slight smile as he removes his right hand from under his cloak. Tsunami tried to identify him by looking at his face for a few seconds. 
As they sit on the sofa that wasn't there before, she says, Naruto.kun. You have grown so much, please come in. I have a mission to go with my team here to Kiri and I thought if we could stay here for the rest of the day. That wouldn't be a problem, would it? She responds. Not at all. After what you and your team have done for us in the wave country, it would be our pleasure to guest you for the night. Thank you. We will take a ship from here tomorrow and go to Kiri for our mission. It is nice that you came to stay here rather than at any hotel, it makes me happy that you didn't forget us, she says to him. The three of them bow their heads and thank her for letting them spend the night there. By the way, this is my team, temporary team. From left to right, Moegi, Konohamaru, and Udon, he says. I don't see Tazuna or Inari anywhere, where are they? Dad's gone to a meeting between some of the village men who have been looking after the country since your team freed us from Gato's reign. Inari is generally outside this time to play with his friends, she informs him. He gestures for his team to follow him. Well, I will meet them later, if you wouldn't mind, I may as well train these three a bit in the meantime, he says. He leaves the house and enters the neighboring woods, where he visits the tree bearing the kanai marks he made so many years ago, some of which are still discernible. He demonstrates the task for them by applying chakra to the bottom of his feet and walking up the tree. All right, here's what you have to do, he says. The three of them had been attempting to reach the top of their individual trees for three hours. Moegi was the one closest to the top, but they were unable to make it there. When they say, that's enough for now, we will head back to rest. We have to take a ship to the land of mist tomorrow, Naruto interrupts. Konohamaru complains, but Naruto ni. Naruto. Sensei. I haven't gotten to the top. Moegi is better than me at this. Which is fine, it took me and Sasuke three days to complete the tree. Walking exercise as we had greater chakra reserves making it difficult to control it while Moegi like Sakura has lower chakra reserves and is better able to do it, he explains to the three of them. While Konohamaru wanted to know if it had any uses, Udon asked him, can you tell us how it would help us, this tree? Walking? It helps in building your chakra control which helps one sufficiently control their chakra and not overuse it. Seriously what are they teaching you in the academy these days? Boring history stuff, basic of being a ninja and the theory of chakra and stuff. They don't teach us any jutsus besides the shinobi 3, Konohamaru informs him. The information causes Naruto to shake his head slightly. Not that he paid much attention to it, but it had not changed from his time. And what has your sensei, Ebisu, taught you till now? We passed the academy and graduated four months ago, he doesn't train us for long hours and whenever he does, we do teamwork exercises with D-rank missions here and there, Moegi tells him. The three of them follow him as he leaves for Tazuna's house. Sighs, well, now you have a basic idea of it and one of the chakra control exercises. Whenever you get the time on this mission, keep practicing it. I want all three of you to be done with it by the end of the mission, he says. As he enters, he notices that Tsunami was preparing dinner for Tazuna and Inari, who were discussing something. As he approaches the pair, he creates a shadow clone that proceeds to see her and assist her in any way he can. When Inari first sees them, she rushes over to give him a tight hug around the waist. He cried out, Naruto.ni.san. I have been waiting for you since Ka. Chan mentioned you, as Naruto grinned and tousled his hair. He shakes his head when he says, it's good to see you as well, Inari. You haven't been giving any trouble to your mother and grandfather, have you? Inari nods rapidly and gestures for them to follow him as he explains his mission. Good, these are my three students for this mission, Moegi, Konohamaru, and Udon. Why don't you take them upstairs and tell them about my last visit or something like that? He asks. You look rather good Naruto. Hmm, it is fine, life is going on. How are you, still drinking at your age? Scoffs. I have had to reduce the amount of alcohol I take because of the new responsibilities that came up after Gato's reign ended, he says to Naruto. Well that is good, you have something to keep yourself busy with now that the bridge is done. Yeah, that's true, so how is your team doing? Kakashi.san, Sakura and Sasuke, he inquires. Kakashi. Sensei is just there. Doing missions and reading the book he always reads, Sakura has been trained under the fifth Hokage, Senju Tsunade, and is her apprentice. That is good for her, the last time she was shaking while protecting me while the rest of your team fought. I didn't have much confidence in her protection. Well, she has grown as everyone else. She is one of the best medical ninjas in our village, I can't deny that fact, saw it myself in Suna. And Sasuke, well he left our village three years ago or something, he says. Hearing it, Tazuna was a little taken aback. Why would he leave the village, 
He was a decent kid with some competition with you as much as I could tell. He told him, with some crucial details kept to himself, yeah, he didn't like that I was getting stronger than him all the while he hadn't progressed much. So in the search for more power, he became a traitor to the village. She calls them down as they all sit down to eat, saying, okay enough talk. Dinner's ready. Children come done to eat dinner, after eating the delectable food and giving her thanks, they retired to their room to sleep, Konohamaru sharing a bed with Udon and Moegi sharing a bed with Tsunami. Naruto was by himself in a room. He opened his room's window and went outside, he closed it, leapt to the ground, and proceeded to a wooded clearing. I ought to have asked Ba. Chan for any scrolls the Shodai Hokage might have left about Mokotan Jutsus. What are we supposed to do? Now that I have injected my body with my Rasengan's blood, I can attempt to determine where he is. He opens the palm of his right hand to face the sky, applies chakra to his hand, and manipulates the size and form of his jutsu using shape transformation. During his training, he had repeatedly produced a one-handed Rasengan in an instant. He sees a blue sphere appear as it usually does, but a second later, its size grows, causing him to lose control and have it explode in his hands. What was that? When I apply as much chakra as I did, it usually works. So why did it suddenly get bigger? Naruto tries to come up with an explanation. That's because your Uzumaki genes have allowed Hashirama's cells to easily and fully merge with yours. That has enabled you to use wood. Style jutsus and greatly enhanced your chakra control. However, that would require me to repeat all of my jutsus and all of the chakra control exercises. Oh no. Stop complaining so much, brat. You can now perform Iryo. Ninjutsu and Genjutsu that you were previously unable to do because his blood and cells suppressed my chakra. Even though I could learn the fundamentals of Iryo. Ninjutsu, I'm not very interested in Genjutsu. Not as good as Sakura, but sufficient to heal others' wounds and weariness. I don't want to know how to handle things like broken bones. Size. Let's give the Rasengan another go before attempting to enlarge and strengthen it. This time, Naruto reduced the amount of chakra needed to form it by a small amount. When he sees a flawless blue sphere in his hands, he holds it for a minute to check for any issues. He then increases the density and volume of chakra he outputs by powering more chakra into it. It exploded in his hands the next second, but its size increased proportionally as if its radius had increased. He is fascinated by the speed at which the burn marks on his hands heal, possibly another benefit of his new blood qualities. Although he did carry his parents' genes and blood, the Kyubi made it seem as though the Shodai's blood cells were also a part of his blood system, giving him a similar body composition and set of skills. This time, he remembers the fundamentals of the Jutsu and tries it again, increasing the chakra in his Rasengan while containing it and giving it more rotational power. He observes with fascination as the jutsu's size increased from that of a typical ball to that of a football. A. N. Only the Udama Rasengan and Sho Udama Rasengan are present, for a time, he managed to keep it up. Woo! Rasengan's size can be increased by me, and it may even be larger than this. He thinks, I'll continue doing this for a while and then make it bigger, and makes the decision to go back inside and sleep. He approaches the window of his room, opens it, and turns in. He awoke the following morning and had breakfast with Tazuna's family along with his team. After expressing gratitude to the three for letting them stay at their home, he and his group head to the seaport to find a ship that will take them to the land of water. After locating one at a fair price, he boards it with the three genins and sets out for a four-dot day journey on the water. After four days with nothing to do but chat or gaze at the open ocean, the past four days were, well, rather dull for all of them. After hearing Inari's version of events, they occasionally questioned him about his first mission. He couldn't practice his various jutsus or chakra control on himself, nor could he train them. He stepped on the land for the first time in a long time, thanking the sailor for bringing them here and paying him. They discovered why the village is known as the village hidden in the mist, while strolling through one of the land of water's lands. There was hardly anything in the distance because the entire area was shrouded in a dense fog. They began walking in the general direction of the village, which they had guessed from the maps and history books. The three genins were able to form a diamond with Naruto in front of them and follow him because they could see a few feet around them. For the last half hour, they had been moving steadily along the path while the children looked around for something in their line of sight without saying anything. As Naruto had never been to Suna, it was their first time both inside and outside the village. Sensing that there were people in front of them, Naruto abruptly stopped and stopped them with a hand gesture. He was able to confirm the number of emotions by focusing his sensory abilities on them and detecting about 50 of them. One of them said, who are you and what is your business here, 
Despite his doubts that 50 of them would be present, Naruto chose to respond even though he had no idea who they were. They might even be Kiri Shinobis. When he responds, we are from Konoha. We are here to give an alliance treaty scroll to the Mizukage from our Hokage, they chuckle. So Konoha's dogs have come here for a treaty with the slutty Mizukage, she should have died like a whore she is along with the other bloodline users, he hears someone from his right say. Given the way they discussed it, Naruto soon came to the conclusion that they detested bloodline users. He didn't want Moegi or the other three behind him to hear anything like that regarding a woman. He quickly flung ten of his three prong kanais in their direction after opening them. As he threw the kanais, many of them were grouped together in various groups around them. He orders them, whispers, keep a lookout and watch each other's back if one of them attacks, while reaching into his cloak for his katana. Taking hold of its handle with his right hand, he feels one of them approaching to attack, as he draws his katana and charges the blade with food and chakra, enhancing its piercing power and sharpness, he disappears in a yellow flash for the genins. He teleports around the different Hiraishin kanais and either swings it horizontally to separate the head from the shoulders or slashes and swings it diagonally to cut them. No less was due to someone who thought or spoke of women in such a way. After killing the final one, he inhales deeply and uses a tiny Sweden jutsu on his katana to clean the blood off its blade. He makes a shadow clone to retrieve his Hiraishin kanais, swings it slightly, and then sheaths it back in its scabbard before approaching the three genins. He asks them, are you three all right? They shake their heads, a little startled by the sheer number of shinobi in the area. As they follow his instructions, he gathers the kanais from his clone and seals all but one of them. Okay, here is what we will do. We don't know if more of the ninjas will come for us. You three hug me tightly and you might feel a bit dizzy after it is done, he says. After a few seconds, he teleports to it after throwing it forward. While he stores the final kanai, the three of them release their grip on him and sit on the ground to regain their equilibrium. Disoriented by the experience, Konohamaru asks, what, the hell, was that? Looking ahead, he could see the village with multiple mountains in the distance. That right there was a space, time ninjutsu, created by the Naidame Hokage and upgraded by the Yandaimi Hokage. Someday you will also be able to do it, maybe. While the three genins are busy observing and taking in the scenery, they begin to walk towards the village gates, saying, all right guys, the village is in front of us, get up. Naruto was glad that they were temporarily distracted from the shinobis they had encountered. One of the two gate guards questioned the group, wait here, state your purpose of entering the village. He tells them, sighs, we are from Konoha, Janan Uzumaki, Namikaze Naruto with three genins of Konoha. We are here on a diplomatic mission with the Mizukage on the order of our Hokage, and then he shows them the documents that have been signed by the Hokage as official documentation. He tells them, bowing his head as the other does the same. Thank you for confirming. Please enter and have a nice stay here. If you walk straight from here you should see the Mizukage's office being the widest and largest, he says. Guard number one turns to guard number two as they both watch them depart for the Mizukage's tower. Did you hear his name? He introduced himself as Uzumaki, Namikaze. You did as well, I thought I misheard him, it means his father is the yellow flash of Konoha. Do you reckon he knows the jutsu that made him famous? Of course he does, at least according to me. The Yandaimi Hokage had killed a thousand Iwa shinobis with that single jutsu back during the ninja war. As they resume their gate duty, one tells two, I hope that whatever diplomatic mission he has come here for goes well for Kiri otherwise I don't know anyone who has been able to find a counter for the jutsu. That's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed this great story, see you in the next one.